Hey, this is Dave Kalick. You guys are listening to Advices Radio. The opinions expressed by the 1.5 doctors on this podcast are for entertainment purposes only. They are not meant to treat or diagnose. If you have a serious condition, seek medical attention immediately. No, 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 no. There's been a mistake, you see. Uh, excuse me. What Dr. Lee is trying to say is that we need to sedate the patient or he could go into cardiac arrest. All right, I'll get the anesthesiologist. Hang on a second, nurse. What we should probably use is marijuana. That'll sufficiently sedate the patient for surgery. Marijuana? But why? We don't have time for questions. We need marijuana now, as much of it as possible. Like a big bag of it. But doctor, we don't have marijuana in this hospital. Shit. Dr. Stephen Ogden. Dr. Vijay Puri. Clinical Muscle starts now. Now. Great Scott. The doctors are in. This is Clinical Muscle on the Vices Radio Network. I am your host, Dr. Vijay Puri. Along with me, as always, the star of this production, Dr. Stephen Ogden. Doc, how you doing? Oh, man. I'm uh I'm hanging in there. I'm alive. How's how's life, man? Uh, we haven't Fuck. Uh, like we we let time slip away from us. For us, it's not a big deal. For listeners, it's more of a big deal because time, a lot of time is like you know three four weeks or whatever you know. Yeah. But for mm-hmm. us, it's like we're just we're always in communication via text message and stuff. So it's that's not too big of a deal. But we we don't talk in person. Well, I know this is the closest we get to talk in person. <laughs> I know, and I, and I've been like, oh my god. This moving shit. I don't oh. know why. Look, bro. So did like, we? I, did we even say like yeah, on the last clinical muscle you were still trying to sell, wasn't it? No. Yeah, and that, now I'm sitting here pretty much in the last room that has any furniture in my house in it, talking to you. All my <laughs> other rooms are empty. Podcasting. I, 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 right, yeah, I'm like, it, it's just I, I don't know what got it. I don't know, man. If 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 I would have took a six months back and thought about this a little bit harder, I probably wouldn't have done it. Like <laughs> it is stressful, man. It's me, that. like you know, it, it, they say that moving uh, is like one of the top three most stressful things you can ever do. I guess apparently. I, I bet if I got some blood work done right now, you know, probably everything's whacked. My cortisol's probably high all the time. You know, yeah, all that yeah. shit. You know, you you, because- you you have adrenal failure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, as long as I don't have renal failure, I'm yeah. fine. I can live with the adrenal failure. Yeah. So, like, but you know, we, last show we did talk about it was right before Boxing Day, or it might have been Boxing Day, or it might have been around that yeah, time. Yeah, around that time. And you taught you t- started your diet, and I'm going to ask you how that's going. And I said I didn't die. I wasn't ready for that yet. So, right. but yeah. um, and and you mentioned that you know, I mean, the stress, and you said, well, maybe this will give you something to focus on. You know, sort of if you if you started your diet. Mm-hmm. So. Things are kind of settling down now temporarily because what happened was we worked out – it almost worked out too good to be true. We sold the house and I was able to come up to – I was able to – happen. a friend was renting a townhouse in town here and he was willing to rent it to us month to month. Oh, wow. with the with the dogs. Wow, now, that's I, huge. I don't know. I don't know if you've attempted to look for housing, rental housing with three big ass dogs. Ever. Oh, for sure, man. For it's sure, it's almost impossible. It is. It's literally impossible. Most landlords did not allow it. I mean, you know, we allow allow pets at our at our complex. Oh, we say, yeah. This is your other gig. This is like your other specialty. This is what I do, man. This, this is, is what I do. Complex and doctoring and nursing and weed <laughs> real estate. This is my wheelhouse, <laughs> man. Even so, even for yeah. me, like we have we have tenants with like two, three dogs or whatever, but they're not. They're not all big dogs, you know. You, like weight limits. On yeah, there's. Them, right? Well, yeah, and it's just like, uh, look, most people are not like Doctor Ogden and family. Okay, most well, people, that's... most people are 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 fucking pigs. Shitty. They're just pigs, man. Like they'll destroy your place. They'll let the dog shit all over the place. Like that's most. Unfortunately, that's most people. That's not the Doctor Ogden family. So it's you know it, you have to. It, it's a catch twenty two. Sometimes it's a hit and miss with uh, <laughs> with who you're renting well, to. The stress, the stress of that. So I started looking around before we even sold the house, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And man, you're every place I called. Nope, nope, nope. I, I, you know, I don't like to do this, but I was like, look, a couple of landlord, a couple of the people. I was like, look, my house is for sale. Mm. I'm a freaking doctor. Yeah, you can you can tell your landlord to come over. My, I'm a doctor whose wife is anal about cleaning. Mm-hmm. You can tell your landlord. To come over my house and walk through it, and you will see that we are not going to fuck their house up. My house is perfect. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, and, and a couple people, you know, called me and they were like, nah. The, and then they had like weight limits, 35 pounds. I'm like, well, no, yeah. my, my dogs are like 80. So that's not going to work. Yeah. That's a, but that's so, a tough so one. So that was a huge stress right there. But I had this, this, this guy who I know who owned a gym near me, 
um, where, that I used to go to. And uh, he had just put the and I and I just reached out to him on Facebook. I said, look, I said, listen, here's the deal. Would you be willing to? And he was like, yep. But here's the thing, which in the end, it's working out better than it could. He wanted us to start renting it January 1st. And I mm-hmm. don't need to be out of the house until mid-February. Yeah. Because he needed somebody in there. So basically, mm-hmm. I'm paying for two houses right now. Yeah. You know, actually, yeah. paying for four houses because we got the little beach place. I got the fucking one being oh, built. I'm geez. living in this one and I'm paying for the other one. But stress-wise, it's been a lot it, you know, as it works out. Moving things over nice and slow and easy every couple of days has been a whole lot better than doing it in one day on settlement. Oh, for sure. Oh, right. by far. Yeah. Me and Chrissy have the house pretty much empty by ourselves. We haven't needed any help. You Dang. Know. Dang. Yeah. We just have – basically all we have left right now is one couch, a dining room set, and three beds. So how long are you, how long are you going to be in the, uh, in the rental home? Six to eight weeks. Okay. That's not too bad. So I, already, I, rent, I, rented, it for, I rented it for him through, through April already. Mm-hmm. Just so he has an income and he has yep. somebody in there. And hopefully if we are in there and we get in, you know, early, that'll still give us time. We can leave our stuff over there and slowly move like we're doing here, which Man. is a lot easier than having to back up a giant three bedroom U Haul truck and do it. So, yeah, oh for sure. It sounds like things are working out pretty good, man. I mean as as good I, as they as good, as good as they could have, you know. I think I think yeah, that's what I'm saying. So meanwhile, while that's been going on, I've been trying to be going now now we are we are a bodybuilding is, medical show. Believe it or trying, not. Yeah. I, <laughs> for what reason we're even here. Um, so I've been I, – I, this week I started to clean the diet up a little bit. And it really hasn't been that hard. But, you know, it's like it's like the meals are not perfectly timed like I'd like them to. And I'm, I'm driving in the car. But I'm, try, I'm trying to get back to, to where I can start a real diet, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. because like things have kind of settled down. Training's getting a little bit better. I'm less – I talked on the last show about how unfocused I've been. Like I need some freaking aid, you know, Adderall. Or mm. Well, as off, I could take that. Yeah, because, you hey, could. Yeah, that would do it. Got this, thank Brady. I got a nice little package in the mail one day. With oh, cool. Big, two big bottles of as off. Yep. The n- newer one. And um, thank you for that. So long story short is I, I think we'll be settled down here. And me and Chrissy are ready to get the hell out of here now. We, we got this townhouse. It's a nice little townhouse. It's like brand new inside. They just repaint. We're like, I just want to be in a place. Because right now our house is like, you feel like you're unsettled. Yeah, it's not. A, it doesn't feel like a home. It just feels like a space you're in for the temporary, you know? Exactly, because it's getting empty. We got no decorations on the wall. Yeah. You, know, you just want to get this over with. Yeah. Now, but it's, fuck God, if I... I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> I, if I, you know, the good news is this house we bought, our new house, not the not the rental, obviously. Mm-hmm. The, the the new build. Yeah, it should be our house till we're dead. Yeah, well, that's the plan, anyways. You never know. You never Unless, know where, where life yeah, will take you, man. You never right. fucking never yeah. know. But that's a good plan, you know. Yeah, I mean, it should be. You know, it's a ranch. And that's kind love of what it. old people buy, right? I love I mean, it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All I have to do is buy the wheel. I have to get the wheel, eventually get the wheelchair ramp put out front for myself. Yep. Yep. The ranch, the, <laughs> the, the ranch style homes, man. Those are the, those are the retirement homes, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But while we're still young, it has a nice finished basement with a bar and everything. Well, we get the Fuck hell out. Yeah. So anyway, that's what I've been up to, man. Besides that and working, I'm still, you know, and the gym thing, gym training's been better. Better. Less. Um, yeah, because like I said, I was constantly in there looking at my watch, wheel, waiting for the realtor to call. And, okay, so now you're a little more relaxed in the gym, right? Just like, yeah, well, you know, I'm able to not worry about better. the outside world. You know, it's back to being my time yeah. where you know when I'm in there, I'm just zoning out and go, do you know training and and then um, so things are things are doing better. Good, that way. at least temporarily. Yeah, yeah. No, it sounds like things are working out, man. Honestly, like I didn't – I was stressing for you. I was like, boy, he's got to rent a place now with three big dogs. I don't know, man. You know, that's like my my wheelhouse. That's my business. I'm like, yeesh, it's going to have a hard time. I'm glad you found something really – I even, even – it was stressing me out a little bit. I'm like, boy, I can't even think about that right now. Yeah, that's something I didn't think about, but it, it it's really hard to find that, man. People Fair. are like – they hate – they hate your dogs. I'm like, dude, you come love them. How do? You, how can you? I look at my dogs' faces. I'm like, how can no. you not love them? It's it's a catch twenty two, man. Because you know I have four dogs, so I'm sympathetic to that crowd, right? Right. But yeah, but, yeah, but, but like I said, not everybody's Doctor Ogden. You know, every yeah. most of these people are just they live like animals. They do. And then as from a landlord standpoint, when those people move out, you have to gut the fucking place, and that yeah. is a huge expense. You know, and it is every time. Yeah. So. The guy that the guy that we're renting from, he said that. 
the well, first of all, it's funny you said that because he was like, Steve, I would rather rent to you month to month and have someone in there I know is not gonna fuck the house up for mm-hmm. a while until mm-hmm. I find someone good for a permanent. Yep. He said he said because when he's been interviewing people, he's like, oh, my God. No. <laughs> he's fucking <laughs> degenerates. They're all degenerates. All yeah, of you. And, and, and they had a real, real rough one that was in the house we're in just before we left. They had a hard time getting her out. They had to go to court. Ugh, what a mess. Yeah, they had, to, they, they had to repaint all the walls. Me and Chrissy went over, and we steam cleaned his carpets for him by ourselves oh, oh, just see? for – Good tenants already. <laughs> well, yeah, because we don't want to sleep. Before. We don't want to fucking bed bugs. Or yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to be careful of that, man. Yeah, we fucking we fucking scrubbed the shit. The house is nice though. It's only eight years old. It's a nice house, but yeah. they you could tell. You know, there's fucking looks like they had a kid and it just ran around the carpets with like fruit punch stains every fucking mm-hmm. winter and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like that <laughs> yeah. won't happen in my house. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Right. Man, I'm glad. I'm glad it worked out a little bit, you know. So, so uh, what's good with you? You're on your diet now. Well, I mean, kind of, yeah. I'll, but what's that mean? You cut out potato chips. So fuck, I cut out. I cut out more cardio. <laughs> I cut out all the sugary stuff, and I cut out uh, the potato chips, and I, I cut out most of the cheeseburgers. I I've been a little frivolous with with the with the with the Culvers and McDonald's here and there, but <laughs> but I keep it under control. Right now, it's mostly about like like portion portion control, you know. Uh-huh. So instead of like eight cheeseburgers, I'll just get like three. You know, <laughs> that's fucking. That's awesome. That's my kind of diet right there. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's right now. It's just kind of like uh, I'm still in that. I'm starting to get into that flat fat phase. You know what I'm talking I, about? Yeah, I, I, I live there. <laughs> I feel like I'm there all the time. Welcome home. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Oh man. Yeah, so yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm just like I'm still like getting rid of uh, a lot of like the just like the fucking bloat and inflammation from like 30 days of pecan pie and Captain Crunch, essentially, right? <laughs> pissing out water, pissing, pissing, pissing all constantly, the constantly, constantly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I'm finding that, um, you know, with uh, w- with these growth hormone shots, it, it, it's really inconsistent because like the like the day of like a growth oh, hormone you, shot, you're probably bloated like mofo. Well, the the bloat starts to come. Like I start looking pretty good like hours after the shot, you know, because yeah. the, things are filling out like they should be, you know. Yeah. Everything everything looks nice and round, and then the next day it's it, it's like that growth hormone keeps filling me out. It doesn't stop, you know. <laughs> so the second day is just I'm just a whole like a water bag, just bad. So like my weight is like I have to like manage the scale. Like I can't take a weight the day after like growth hormone administration because yeah. for me the water retention is doubly bad the next day for whatever then, reason. Yeah. Yeah, and then you're fucking. You'll be like, "Oh my god, how did I gain all that weight?" And you'll be fuck your head yeah, up, dude. I, but I, I, I looked at your your back shot you put out the other day, and you know, to me, I, I haven't seen a shot in a while. To me, it looks like your your lower backs looks like your waist is getting a little tighter. It's tighter. Your back is and your back yeah. is wide as fuck. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, it's yeah. all it's all in the camera up. angles. You know, it's all about the yeah. <laughs> it's all about the angles and the gram. You prob- Got some. You got some professional um, video camera installer down there in the in the uh, BNR basement gym. Come in so that he, you know, exactly what camera to turn to for the perfect angles. They set it all up. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I made Phineas. <laughs> I made Phineas sit down right behind me, and then I taped the phone to his head. <laughs> I see your ass doing that. And the fucking dog just sitting like there. you're gonna fucking work when you're down here. You're gonna do something. Yeah, how, well, how's Lazy the weather dog. out there? How's the weather in Michigan? Where we just got some little bit of snow, but it's not bad, man. Like it's it's January. Like this should be fucking terrible right now in Michigan, you know. I'm sitting here staring. At, this is like, you know what? I, I don't know why I didn't take advantage of this room. The 14 years I lived here, this is actually pretty fucking nice where I'm sitting right now. I'm sitting. At the, we have this really nice dining room set that no one's ever sat at, but now we're forced to because we got nothing else to sit on. Or yeah, 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 and it sounds good. Like, uh, like, and, like the room. I can hear the you room. Know what? It sounds good. I'm sitting here, sitting at the table, looking out the two big windows, and we got a snowstorm last night. It looks fucking beautiful. It does. It, it does. does. I know, doesn't it? I love like when it's when it's snowing and when and like, like there's a fresh coat. You know, that's, I'm like, this room is like nice energy. I should. Why the fuck didn't I ever sit in here? It's kind of cool. I could eat peaceful. breakfast here. Look out the window. There Jesus Christ. Now I'm moving. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> you, just, you just discovered the room like, fuck. <laughs> seller's, seller's remorse. <laughs> um, no, what I was getting to was I asked about the weather. We got a. I'm putting my fingers in air quotes. Nobody can see that. We got mm-hmm. a snowstorm last night. But a snowstorm to us is like four inches to you. Yeah. 
That's not like, a guy, everyday occurrence, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, bad. but to us, I woke up and I was like, oh, shit, I actually had to go brush it off my, my car. My truck actually was covered. Well, I think you've that- got more snow than us here, in, at least in the Detroit metro, man. We have just, like, literally a dusting. Not even a dusting. dusting. That's it. Yeah, know? we we, we – uh, this is – this is the our this is our first snow this this uh this year that I could tell and it's a pretty good one I mean for Delaware I mean for once we hit around four to six inches people start to fucking panic here like you think it's you think you're in fucking uh you know you're you know you the, the town's gonna be shut down for yeah, a month yeah yeah like like like, like in Florida if it ever snows for like you know like an inch or something <laughs> oh my god the state you shuts down <laughs> state of emergency <laughs> they're in a state of emergency half inch yeah yep <laughs> all the fucking orange the orange trees are gonna freeze yeah yeah uh, so. My hey, math, is, my math is gonna go bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Florida. So, man, um, so what's been good with you? Anything new? I know uh, I heard on BNR that you had a loss in your family, so I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was, uh, that was crazy, man. You know, the she's, uh, I grew up with this with this girl. She was my cousin, and uh, uh, yeah, she's, that's she's my age, to... man. You know, yeah, that's terrible. So it's hard. It, it's hard. It was. It was even hard. It, the worst thing is, is like when you haven't seen family in like a decade, and then you have to see them for that shit. And you have to see them for a funeral, and it's like I, I feel terrible smiling at all. But I'm like I'm seeing all these people for the first time in many years, and I'm, it, it brings me joy. While at the same time, I feel terrible that my cousin I, has passed away. She's sitting in the coffin right over there. You know what I mean? It's like I know. I don't know how to happens. act, man. I, I don't know. I don't know what the proper etiquette is. That is a weird phenomenon, and uh, I know exactly how you feel because it happened to me this summer. Yeah, um, yeah. I have I have a huge family with tons. I'm hundreds, probably hundreds of cousins, and we all live in Delaware. Like, but I don't see anyone because you know I'm like you. I keep to my fucking self. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my uncle passed away this summer, and me and Chrissy went up. We were we were staying down the beach. We went up. We rode up to the funeral, the viewing, and you go in and you're seeing these. I'm seeing my cousins I haven't seen in three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and I'm seeing their kids who I don't even fucking know. They're introducing me, and I'm like smiling and laughing. Yeah, but people are standing around crying, and I you're know. crying. It's a really weird mix of emotions. It is. So, it's so yeah. weird, and and it's and it's so yeah, I know exactly. like, dude. I just had that same experience. It was really you're like, oh, we shouldn't be sitting here happy. There's a dead body up. Yeah, I know, I know. It's it's awful, man. And then it's like you don't. I don't know. It's like it's so it's such a mix of and then it's so taxing. Like it's yeah, it emotionally, is. it's so taxing. You leave and you're like, I want to go take a nap. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? You know, you got it. The way I think of it is like, when you're having that, are you, what religion is your family in general? Are they are they Christian, Catholic, or are they uh, no, Muslim? No, it's mostly Hindu. Hindu. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. So you know, in most religions, though, if, you know, if you think of it like the way I think of it, when we're in there, you're smiling, you're, you know, if you kind of think of it as a celebration of their life, not so much as a yeah, you know, yeah. You try to you try to I try to rationalize rationalize it that way. Like, you know, he wouldn't want us to be, or she wouldn't want us to be sitting here all laying on the floor moping and fucking crying. And, yeah, you know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's kind of the vibe I get, you know. But it is a weird thing when you got someone up there who's dead and you're back in the back laughing. You know, my laugh. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of hard to keep that to a <laughs> – you know, someone makes a joke. And you're Who's this fucking it. asshole over here? Would you get him yeah. out of here? Exactly. But the good thing is my family knows him. Disrespectful prick. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> oh, man. In your, in your family, it's the DNA, though. I bet a lot of people sound like you with your laugh. Uh, um, <laughs> my, I don't know. My laugh is pretty fucked up. Pretty unique. It's pretty unique. Yeah. My, I think my daughter might have it, though. Oh, Very si- shit. Very similar. My uh. son doesn't, but my daughter, she gets the crackle and it's fucking funny. Oh man. It's in the genes. Oh, I'm telling you, one of them's gonna have it and it's gonna be funny. It's funnier yeah. it's funnier that it's the girl. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's it's hilarious. It and she's all sense. like pretty and proper and stuff. And, and then she's got the this cackle. The fuck up. She gets the tears in her eyes and shit and she's fucking backing up. But uh I also <clears throat> I also was listening to B and R and I heard a big announcement for the Advices Radio Network um, that they picked up a sponsorship by True Nutrition. Fuck yes, code will be Advices. How about that? Pretty it's easy. Flat. Pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I, 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 I definitely will be using that. Fuck yeah, man. Oh, we, I'm, shit. I mean, we have been using True Nutrition, True Protein for goddamn probably a decade at least. You know, I yeah. mean, at oh, least yeah. it's crazy. I mean. Oh, sorry about that. If anybody hears anything, I just moved a bag out of my way. I didn't want to yeah. suffocate on it. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think you guys were, were talking about – Scott was really excited about that. And I think 
<clears throat> I think um, I think that's huge. Oh, it's it's, the- en- it's enormous. It's it's just, like I said when we first started doing this podcast and that was like the first thing we thought of. I was like, man, we will have made it if we ever get if any of us get like a, a true nutrition sponsor. <laughs> you know, it was like the that was like the pinnacle for us. Yeah, no, that's that's freaking awesome because I think it's sort of uh, I don't know how you how do, how do I say this. <clears throat> it adds some validation that someone who is legit in in the industry mm-hmm. kind of believes in the you yes. know sort of supports the system yeah, you know, yeah. supports uh, the network yes yes i mean you want people like meadows or dante trudell or you know these people on on, on in your corner and that and th- those are the names that mean something in this industry you know and so if we yeah. can support people like that like we have been supporting for the past fucking decade or more you know it's it's nice to get that validation for sure like hey you know what these guys are all right let's give them a sponsorship you know yeah, so that's pretty awesome. Fuck Scott's it. been working hard on that stuff. He's been working you know his ass mean? off. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this is good. It's a good, <laughs> good, very, good, very good thing. A lot of great things going to happen this year for Advices Radio, man. Like we've got this, the new sponsors, just the best, you know, Pinnacle in the sport. And then we've got the Arnold coming up, and that's going to yeah. be crazy. How about, you know, how about how about that? That's, that's fucking coming good. fast. That'll yeah. that'll be uh, <clears throat> that'll be. Um, and if and if it's everything works, awesome. if everything works out the way that I think it's going to work out with like my uh, my uh, liquidating of as assets here in, in yeah. the U.S., you know, I like I think I'm going to be like free, like I think I'm going to oh. be free to go and actually spend a lot of time there. So we might be able to have two breakfasts together. Fuck yes, yes. Actually, me and McNally were talking on the phone a couple and two weeks lunches ago. for sure. Yeah, Scott called me on the phone. Like, yeah, no. I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, maybe ten, I don't know. It was it was it was recently, a few mm-hmm. weeks ago. We had a, we had a, we were just talking on the phone. He called me. We were just talking about shit and talking about the Arnold and that. And he was telling me about about the uh, you know the best bar ever, helping him out and mm-hmm. wanting him to go ahead and promote and do do what he needed to do out there at the Arnold. And yep. he was cu- he would come up with a plan to do some things. And I think he's still working on that. And uh, I, I don't I didn't have I haven't I haven't got a place to stay, but I, I think I might just. End up sleeping in, on a sleeping bag on Scott's floor. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking. I mean, well, shit, I, I may Scott's, too. Who knows? We'll that, see. I was, I was thinking maybe me and you just bring sleeping bags. Sleep and we just, over. We, yeah. We sleep on the floor and we help. You know what I mean? And, right and there that the, shit. That shit's going on Instagram for sure. <laughs> oh my god. We're gotta, we got. We have to have like matching PJs and everything. <laughs> oh my god. Let's get like some. <laughs> unicorn pjs or or something <laughs> something fucking and we'll do like a we'll do like a slow motion video of us shirtless having a pillow fight oh there'll be no shirtlessness that's for sure <laughs> you have time man you, you'll be dieted down by then you'll be fine no no i'm gonna be wearing full-on big giant sweatshirts in fact i might have to get scott to order me a couple of advices sweatshirts i'll buy from him i wish we had them they'd be perfect right now in this snow yeah but um, oh yeah yeah. Big hoodie, and then I'll put like five big shirts under it, like the skinny kids do. You ever see the skinny guys? <laughs> yes, yeah. They'll, they'll wear like six t-shirts under their sweatshirt, that, <laughs> and yeah. they take it off, and they're eighty pounds. Yeah. I, I cracked me up when I when I examine someone. And the it's kids okay, do. man. Fat kids do that too. They they they, they, they were like, I'll, well, I'll wear many layers so I look, so I can I can tuck in the fat. You, know? <laughs> you can. Like I was hide. like, I can hi- hide my orangutan titties if I just it's make smooth, tight shirts here. It yeah. smooths the wrinkles out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know all the tricks, man. I was a fat kid. Oh fuck! Well, you know I was still am. Anyway, <laughs> hey Doc, I've got a question for you. Yeah, and I've been—I uh, was just thinking about it because I've been having some, you know, growth hormone give you some weird stuff sometimes. And I know, I know, with diabetics, a lot of times when blood sugars get raised, uh, they they start to have like extremity itching. Yeah, you know, itching, and sometimes they'll get, uh, sometimes they'll even get break out in like rashes in their extremities. You know, like uh, yeah. Uh, even dry skin and stuff, and it's flaking, and you're itching it constantly, eczema, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. With elevated blood sugars, is that is that a common is that a common side effect with the itching of the extremities for um, for like I, diabetic patients? It can it can be, but what I what I usually see with rashes um, with diabetics when your blood sugars are elevated, and I don't know um, more 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 along the lines of like you're more. More predisposed to things like tinea corporis and, mm. and 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 ring you know ringworm type stuff. So and, you're susceptible, and, and, is what it candida, is. candida overgrowth. So yeast infections. Mm. So they'll come in a lot with athlete a lot a lot more you know athletes foot type stuff or like you know a red ra- rash on their arm that's itchy and it, and it turns out to be like a fungal infection like a ringworm a tinea yeah. corporis. Yep. Um. So I see stuff I see stuff like that and then you check their blood sugar and it's you know 
three hundred, and you say, "Hey, you know, how long? Jeez. When's the last time you had your A one C done? Or when? When? When are you? T- oh, I stopped my medicine four months ago." And then you go, "Oh, well, your blood sugars must have been rising high." In women, <clears throat> I don't know to go there, but in women, a big indicator is a, a girl. Sometimes they'll be get, they get a lot of yeast infections. Mm-hmm. If you get a lot of that, if you get a lot of candida vaginitis, yep. um, you might want to check their blood sugar. So yeah, I do see dermatologic sort of. Um, uh, you know, manifestations from high blood sugar for sure. Yeah. Um, the itching sort of, uh, things like that, tingling, itching. I, I see with diabetics who've been really diabetic for a long time. And then you start to worry about neuro neuropathic stuff like mm-hmm. neuropathies. Oh, my toes are always burning and itching, but not new diabetics. We're not like, a, not like someone who was having high blood sugars. I mean, this is just my opinion. Someone who's having high blood sugars from like growth hormone, you know, and they've been using it for six months and now, now they're getting those symptoms. I would think would be more, I'd, I'd, I'd probably think more towards something else, but, but you can get that for sure. Mm, yeah. So that's something that, um, you know, <clears throat> frequent users of the growth hormone need to be, need to be a little bit more, uh, cognizant, cognizant of because, uh-huh. you know, with, with the elevated blood sugars, if you're not checking your blood sugars and you start having weird side effects like that, that's something that you need to, uh, address, you know, maybe take a break. Cause I was thinking about the same thing. I'm going to check my blood, blood sugars today. I usually don't have an issue ever with blood sugars, but when I start getting weird sem- symptoms and side effects like this and, the the bloat gets out of control it's just yeah. wise it's just wise to check it you know just to see if you know what what if i'm getting insulin resistant over here you know it's a good no, I, it's a good tool to, to to use with growth hormone use i mean if you are doing running growth and you're not checking your blood sugars and you've been on it for two years straight three years straight and you're mm-hmm. doing even mm-hmm. even even something like maybe four a day or mm-hmm. two you know something like that two to four a day and maybe maybe you already have a predisposition towards type 2 diabetes you know you you were a fat kid when you were young or right. your parents have it you know even though you're quote not diabetic running those higher blood sugars let's say you're waking up every day and it's it's even if it's like 150 or 180 or mm-hmm. that's fucking high man you know that's right. high um, and you do that for three years straight, Jeez, yeah. you, you could essentially do the same type of damage that an uncontrolled diabetic would if you do that five years, you know, you start yeah. to get the, yeah. you start to get the, yeah, you start to increase your risk for cardiovascular disease, you start to increase your risk of neuropathy, you start to inc- increase your risk of renal, because basically you're giving yourself diabetes, so that's, you definitely, people should be checking their blood sugars, especially people who are doing it for months, years at a time, whatever, taking a break. Yeah, you know? yeah. and it's happened. And to pro- it's and happened at the professional wrong. level many, many a times. You know, all of a I'm sudden, sure it's happened more than we know. Yeah, even. yes, yes, exactly. We only and and I know of documented cases that I'm sure it happens a lot more. You know, well, didn't Lionel Baiki have diabetes that got cured by by prayer? Yep, yep, yep. And, and I'm it, not speculating. There was another guy. He was from South Africa. Same way. He's like, uh, he, he 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 turned into a diabetic, and then um, man, I can't remember his name now. But uh, but yeah, through through the power of Jesus, um, he, <laughs> yeah. he was able through to pa- cure his diabetes. Through the power of coming off that twenty units of growth a day, <laughs> yeah, I'll, and I'll a little bit of insulin something. here and there. Yeah. So yeah. these guys, Ronnie Rockle was another one. Is another one. He's still he's still battling that right now, but he's he's found a way around it. But I remember when he was having trouble getting in shape, and that was weird for Ronnie Rockle. Like yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, Ronnie Rockle just peeled tough. all the time. Yeah, like yeah, Andreas yep. Munzer peeled, and then he went through this phase where like. For like three years straight, he was just soft and he could not get in shape for any shows or anything. And it turned out, you know, growth hormone abuse or whatever the abuse was, he turned into like a 1.5 uh, type 1.5 diabetic, you know. And that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's basically type 1, uh, but as an adult, type 1.5, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah, it can happen. So you definitely got to tape. So if you're having weird symptoms, I mean, the typical symptoms too of high blood sugars, if they're high enough and they've been running. But see, they have to be pretty high, but of course, to re, you know, review diabetic symptoms. I mean, polyuria, which is you, you know, you're peeing all the time, you're mm-hmm. thirsty all the time, um, blurry vision. If you're having any kind of vision change, oh, you went, to, you know, you're on ten units of growth, and you've been doing it for three years, and you just went to the eye doctor, and your prescription changed fourfold. Mm-hmm. You know, you might want to check your blood sugars. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so all that kind of all that kind of stuff is something to pay attention to too. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to uh, definitely like I'm on uh, I use I use I'm not too concerned because between the carterine and the uh, and the uh, metformin, um, you know, that that should keep blood sugars well in check, if not maybe yeah, on the low yeah, side, yeah. you know, and you know, the, 
the way you're doing it with the couple breaks, couple units of you know yeah. shots. If if it is going up, it's probably only going to be for those few days. It's probably not going to be sort of prolong every day. You yeah. know, it's not going to yeah, be yeah. every day for 360 you know days a year or whatever. Yeah. As opposed to banging, 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 and no break. Yeah, but, every day. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Just every day I mean, shots like that. I mean, really, the thing about checking blood sugar is I don't think you need to be anal about it. But it definitely – I mean the big the big one I would look at is my fasting. You know, I would wake up. You want to check the fasting in the morning because, yep. you know, <clears throat> that's the one that's going to be really sort of – it shouldn't be high. I mean it should be – you know, really it should be less than 100. But we yeah. – I mean I'd like to see it less than 80, you know, Fa- 90, 80. Yeah, fasting is the telltale sign. I mean, you know, yeah, you can't – waking up. You can't yeah, you can't ahead. be eating and then and then taking your blood sugar that your blood sugar will be all over the place literally you know even if you wait an hour postprandial or whatever it's still not going to be a correct representation of where your where your baseline is at best time is fasted for sure yeah because I mean you never want to see your blood sugar postprandial even above like one forty or one you know 130, 140 mark but there are some times where someone might you know eat who's perfectly healthy and they'll eat just something something that's super sugary or super carby and maybe it'll go up to 150 that doesn't mean you're diabetic maybe you know but if if that happens all the time you check your blood sugar in the morning and you're absolutely fasting and you're getting you know 130s 120s you know even over 100 really if it's over 102 you know that's that's telling you something Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. so that's that, def- and that's definitely something you want to keep an eye on. <laughs> Man. When I was uh, when I was a bit younger, and uh, I had my like my, my first round of blood work done, that was like fucking I don't know, thir- twelve years ago now. Just checking uh, checking out my uh, fasting glucose and my triglycerides. I forgot what I was getting it done for. I think it was it was I think it might, might have been for like um, health insurance. Maybe 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 it was that or it was like uh, I can't remember what it was for. Man, I think I feel like it was school related in some way or, or another. But oh, um, okay, yeah. But uh, I remember I got it done. And uh, I was supposed to be fast. I, I didn't know. And oh. uh, I had like – I was like – the, the thing was at like, at like noon, you know, and I had, I had gone to IHOP in the morning and had like oh, – it was all you can – Oh, off the hook. All you can eat pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's one way to sabotage your blood work for sure. And the, and the lady was like – I go in there when it was my appointment. She's like, are you fasted? I'm like, no. <laughs> she's like, oh, oh she's like, oh, okay. And then that, my 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 stuff came back, and my triglycerides and my blood sugars were like astronomical, just astronomical. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, my doctor was worried. Yeah, yeah. They they were like, oh my god, let's try this again, just just to be sure. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> I didn't yeah, tell him I had all you can eat pancakes. You know, that's the 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 one the one the one reading that is absolutely can be fucking acutely f- screwed up. If you don't get your blood level fast, if you don't get your blood done fasting and, and you grub prior to that is the triglycerides. Right. They, I've seen them go on a normal person four or five hundreds because they ate a big, you know, oh, yeah. fatty meal or what you did, a big high 10, 10 pancakes. And then yeah. you're like, oh, shit. It you was know, 24. You got- it was 24 pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I counted because it was all you can eat and I didn't break the record. Like, so. HDL HDL is obviously hard to screw up, but triglycerides and, and LDL can be screwed up me, me, mostly because triglycerides go up acutely. If, depending on if you eat, like I said, something shit that was really really bad, you could yeah. make them go up. And and LDL is a calculated value, so if you fuck the triglycerides up, the LDL is fucked up. The HDL is is pretty hard to screw up if you go get your blood work non fasting. Yeah. But, yes. But the right. the other, and of course blood sugar. Blood sugar is going to be fucked up too. Oh yeah, you, that was out of control. If, if, they, if the doctor thinks it's fasting and it's not you know <laughs> and you come in with a thousand reading <laughs> you got a problem hey guys why are you using sports nutrition that was designed for someone else at truenutrition.com they offer the world's largest selection of quality protein powders and they let you design your own custom blend from a variety of powders flavors boosts and packaging options like the team skip blend for instance That's over 20 billion possible combinations to create a protein powder tailored to your diet, your goals, your tastes, and your budget. TrueNutrition.com also offers the ability to create delicious custom oatmeal blends. And they're third-party tested, proving that all their supplements are ensured to have the highest level of quality and value. Don't be a sucker and pay for fancy packaging and gimmicks. Discover the source that bodybuilders trust and stop using mass-produced nutrition that wasn't designed for you. TrueNutrition.com. 
and use our code ADVICES at checkout to let them know that you support the shows. You know, <clears throat> this makes me rem- remember one thing I remember back is uh, I always wondered, you know, the, the, you know, we still hear this today and I don't really care about, but does, does, does the diet soda make your blood sugar go up at all? You know, Yo, that's with, a good question, actually. Yeah. And I, and I, <clears throat> I'm still not a hundred percent convinced it does or doesn't eat. It doesn't um, a little bit. I did a little study on myself. It was a long time ago though, where I, where I kept checking my blood sugar after I drink my diet Coke in the morning. Mm-hmm. And some days it would be perfect, and some days it would be like one hundred and one. Just a, I mean, that's a little bump, you know. Just a little bump. So, so, I mean, even so, if that, and I, I would be like, "Why is it? What did I eat last night?" And then I'd be like, "Yeah, maybe it was a diet coke." So, I, for a while, I was convinced, and I got, I got went into this whole, "I'm not drinking caffeine, diet coke yeah, yeah, thing yeah. for a while, <laughs> thinking I was going to get myself diabetes." But long <laughs> shortness, you got it. I'm getting long story short is you got to be careful. I mean, I tell people. You want to go fasting, but you don't want to be dehydrated. So you want to pound some water, you know, before you get your blood work done. You want yeah, to be yeah, full. Yeah. You want to be hydrated because then all the other markers are going to go off. You know, your kidney function is going to be off a little bit. If you get up at four a.m. and you haven't and you haven't drank for twelve hours, <clears throat> and you're a bodybuilder who has you know two hundred pounds of muscle, let's say you know whatever, you're a two hundred pound guy. You train the day before, and then you fast from eight to eight, and you go in in the morning and get your blood. You got to imagine there's all kinds of shit floating in your system. Muscle byproducts break down. Your liver enzymes are going to be up. And if you don't sort of hydrate and flush them out, you're at, that's, that's why people's values look screwed up a lot. Mm-hmm. They just didn't hydrate enough. Yep. You tell them, come, come back in 12 hours. Go drink some water. Come back. You do it the same day. I bet it'll be better. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a, some people that I help them out with their labs, you know, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that happens a, a bit. And I had one recently. That, that this was one I haven't seen before who had perfectly normal liver enzymes, but his bilirubin was elevated. No shit. It, uh, yeah. And I, 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 I couldn't figure that out. So we just kind of, we just kind of said, look, he was, I was helping him out with like, should I start competing again or not? Um, you know, but all his values were good. And I was like, you know what, that, that number really. And then we had some labs from previous. It was like, that was normal. And like that number really, it doesn't, it's sort of like everything else is normal, but wow, it's bothering me. Like, why is it up? So we waited like four mm. weeks and repeated it, and it came back to normal. So oh, I'm, wow. I'm going to go ahead and say that even Billy Rubin could be affected from training. I don't know that right off my head, but I mean, I saw it because he, he had trained, and then he went and got his blood work, even though I said, don't do that. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, so, what's Billy Rubin is what? Just broken down red blood cells, dead red yeah, blood so, cells, you know? Yeah. You know so I can I, see and, that. Tur- turnover that, of red blood cells from training? Sure, it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, he might have been a little dehydrated or something, you know? Sure, <clears> but, yeah. But – uh. That was a weird one. I never had really yeah, anybody. One. Bill, yeah. Billy Ruby. It wasn't real high, but it was high enough that I was like, hmm. what the fuck is that high for when everything else is normal? So <clears throat> you got to get hydrated for your labs. Yeah. yeah. How do we get talking about that? The fuck? Uh, growth hormone tangent, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You said we started <laughs> blood sugar tangent. <laughs> blood sugar tangent. That was, a pretty good, that was a pretty good tangent, though. It's important. I mean, this stuff that, you know, bodybuilders probably understand. Well, I think I think a lot of the, 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 the younger bodybuilders don't understand that yeah, there's – you know, growth hormone is not some fucking miracle drug. It's not some miracle oh, thing, and you got to be careful, just as careful as you would be with with AAS, man. It, it can affect your health in a completely different way. You know, all that all that shit, man. You know, you, you can't. You, whenever you're putting something in your body in, in excess, you, you, you gotta. I think we actually have a question, kind of relating to something like this. Hmm. I mean, things. I think in general, I've always felt like <clears throat> if you. If you're using supplements or whatever and you're doing it smart and, and, and you're working with a doctor or you're working with someone who's knowledgeable and knows what they're doing and you know how to read blood work. I mean I'm, I'm from the thought you – know, I'm not promoting it or condone it. I'm just saying I'm from the thought that you can do things very safely and healthy if if, if you're smart about it. But you know, and a, a 20-year-old kid's never smart about anything. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I mean nope. I was one once. I yep. was one once sitting here now with a gray beard and bald head, but I was you know, 20 – before uh-huh. um so, yeah um so i think you know if, if people if, if if people would just do things smartly then you know you, you can be healthy and you know make gains with a z and yeah, not yeah, yeah. not have to kill yourself well you're i think the problem is most bodybuilders are, are just extreme whether you know i think and that and that's like in their personality that's not because of the sport that's not because of you know how they train or whatever i think that's just just, just they were born that way they're they, they 
most bodybuilders are just extremists. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yep. so, yep. and so there's no, if you're, if you know, the fucking kids, 20, 21, God, even 25, you're still kind of dumb. You know, you're just kind of an idiot and you just do yeah. whatever, whatever it takes. You you're know? extreme. You're extreme. And you think you're in the, in the <laughs> you, you, you're, most of your brain is not working and you're extreme, you know, and that's, and exactly. that's a problem for the youth, you know? Oh man, you want to, uh, you want to dive into some of these questions? Let's attack. <clears throat> Let's attack. I've got We're the. Gonna, I'm, I'm afraid everyone's going to be asleep at the wheel right now. Oh, for sure this. they are, and this and this may put them into a deeper REM. Let's see. Um, oh, oh, you know what? Real quick, um, I know you guys did this on BNR too, but man, so, shout out, you know, condolences to the Cervantes family. Oh, for sure, uh, Derek, a poor De- guy. De- mm. Derek is actually the guy who invented the first medical muscle yep. sort of um, thing with I don't know if anyone remembers this who's listening you've been listening for a while Forever. but the first the, for, the first um, logo for medical muscle with me and Matt Meinrod was me shooting a champagne bottle I in know. the doctor's <laughs> office <laughs> do you remember that picture? Oh for sure I remember that yeah yeah that's a great picture I can't find it, 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 it it'll pop up on my Facebook memories if you but, uh, if you find it you, you need to put that as your as your uh, as your profile yeah, picture because yeah. I miss it I miss that picture I, yeah yeah that's a great picture I <laughs> still like i crack up so he he made this logo he he, he plucked that off my facebook page i Aww. didn't even know he did it and he sent it to me and was like what about this and me and matt Monrod were fucking bagging up we were like that is great <laughs> you know but that yeah, was a he, good- he's done so much he he even did like the very first clinical muscle yeah yeah uh, I know. poster mm-hmm. and all that stuff man he, he's done a lot of the behind the work behind the scenes stuff man and it's just a, it's a shame you know yeah, it's always a shame to hear that anyway i just wanted to throw that out there but uh on to these topic, these questions. So from forum.advicesradio.com, you can go to the website there, forum.advicesradio.com. Go to Bodybuilding and Discussion link. Press that, and then you can get to the page where you can submit questions for clinical muscle, blood, sweat, and gear, mind, muscle minds, all that great stuff, man. It's, it's right there, and uh, you'll be happy to know that we are at the top of the page right now. I saw that. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? How about that? How about yeah, that? that- so we've got questions here, Doc, and like I said, we don't really have our emails. It's it's no go anymore. It's only on the forums. So as of 2019, forum only questions. I, I I sometimes I still get some via like Instagram stuff. I'm just like, yeah, fine, no worries. We'll 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 we'll, we'll attack it, and then I forget. You, you know. You know what? I got I got an Instagram one <clears throat> that he it, he sent me a message yesterday, and um, unfortunately I haven't got back to him yet. But I might read that on here and see what your thoughts are on this question before I answer it. Yeah, but um, find I, it, I mean, find obviously it. I'm not going to say the name, but yeah, I think it's a pretty good thing that some people on here. Might want to hear. Yeah, see if you can uh, see if you can pull that up, Doc. In the meantime, I'm, we'll go ahead and answer this first. Yeah, one. if we have time. And, yeah, you know. yeah. yeah. Uh, hello, Doc Ogden and Veej. I've been going to an HRT clinic do a uh, clinic for a while now. They prescribe up to 400 milligrams of testosterone sip per week and other AAS like Nangelone, Decanoate, and Oxandrolone. Wow, that's a great clinic. Uh, since- I, I had to double check this. I'm like, is he is he kidding or is that's he really? Working? That's great. This must be a Florida clinic. Um, has to be. Since I'm legally scripted these items, my question is on health implications of using these substances in low doses on a semi-regular basis. I'm assuming I'm getting blood work and checking my blood pressure, uh, and these are in range. How dangerous is it really to alternate between 8 to 10 weeks of 150 milligrams testosterone and 10 to 12 weeks of 3 to 400 milligrams testosterone plus either 200 milligrams of Deca a week or 25 to 50 milligrams of Anavar a day scripted by the clinic, of course. I feel like these uh, these are baby doses compared to what I've seen on the internet, but I've made good progress with them so far. I know uh, I know just because I'm obtaining them legally doesn't mean that it's healthy for me. I'm in my early 30s and otherwise healthy. I know this is difficult to answer, but I'm wondering your thoughts on the health implications of this unconventional scripted HRT. My end goal is not to compete, but just to give myself a boost in performance and looking and feeling my best while keeping my health in mind. Thank you. Mm, Doc, what do you think? Um, <clears throat> well, first off, I yeah, like like I was – I had to double check this because I was like, that's a really unique clinic. I mean I <clears throat> I don't know – I don't know what the, the, I'd love to see some of these HRT clinics, which which is fine. We need people to do that, but I'd love to see their diagnosis codes, like mm-hmm. what they're using. Well, well, I guess I guess the thing is, most of those are out of pocket, right? There are a lot of most cash have. ones, so I guess they don't have to worry about diagnosis codes. Which is one reason why they may be able to get away with prescribing some of these off. Sort of, not listen. Uh, Oxandrolone is very 
prescribable. I mean, it's it's a medicine that's available for certain things, mm-hmm. and I don't think he has any of them, and most HRT people don't. But, but you know, you can get away with um, prescribing things off-label, which is what I think they probably do. They probably are saying it's off-label for whatever, low libido or whatever. So anyway, lost that was a tangent. Um, I never can recommend you not following your doctor's prescribed doses. So going up on your own, you know, I can't say that's a good thing. But overall, <clears throat> I think when we're talking about dangers of things, I think we're talking about going super physiologic for long periods of time. Like, you know, if you're really, if your blood work is really good and your hormone levels are in quote a normal range um, on this sort of regimen, and your doctor's following you. I mean, the doctor thinks it's safe, and I can't say I don't either. I mean, and so, but here's the thing: you got to be diligent about the blood work, mm-hmm. and and you know, as soon as you see something popping out of range, you got to talk to your doctor about well, what do we do? Where is this coming from? And you got to hope that your guy who's prescribing this HRT knows exact really what they're doing. Because I, I got to venture to say, <clears throat> there's as far as I know. Any kind of doctor can become an HRT doctor. You don't necessarily have to be a specialist or have a certificate. Like I could move to Florida and and tomorrow be an HRT HRT doctor, but I Fuck think yeah. I probably I'd probably be a good one. Yes, you would. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I would be a. We good We need to one, put but, this in motion at some point too. By the yeah, way, yeah, right. But there are some people who may not know what really they're looking for if someone's having side effects from Deca. Mm-hmm. You know, they might yep. they might not they might not. Most don't, know, man. Most. Don't. That's what I mean. Yeah. They may not they may not realize that you know. The, the, you know, they might not be paying enough attention to your hemoglobin, yeah, your yeah. hematocrit, uh, and just saying, oh, everything looks pretty good. You know, it's 18, but it's not completely, you know, 30, and they're just kind of pumping you out because a lot of guys – so anyway, as long as your blood works in range and you feel good and you look good and your cholesterol's good, you're not walking around with a single-digit HDL, um, you know, a five for two years. Yeah. Blood pressure is not high because you're going up on the testosterone uh, dose a bit. You know, you're not walking around at 160 all day because you're holding a lot of fluid, um, whatever, things like that. Like I said before, I don't promote and condone anything, but I'm just an honest guy. And I think just like any other medication that I prescribed, blood pressure medication, sugar medication, <clears throat> I think these things can be used very safely and and and, you, and your well being and you know how you feel that's always important too your your uh, quality of life so if that's all good I think you're good yeah yeah I can't um, I'm gonna have to answer this as a bro like an edu- as an educated bro because the yeah. doc the doc already answered it medically perfect so um, I, I I I like this I like his plan you know I like his plan for uh, for longevity. I think eight to ten weeks of 150 milligrams of testosterone, and then and then and then bumping it for the next 10, 10 to twelve weeks, and then alternating back and forth is a great idea. And I'll tell you why, because uh, elevated hormones is never usually a great thing, and, and even like naturally, your testosterone waxes and wanes, man, throughout yeah. the, throughout the day <clears throat> and throughout a period of like eight to 10 weeks anyways, you know, um, mm. it, it's highly dependent upon your environmental situation, your training situation, your, your food situation, those hormones will, will wax and wane. So I like that he's taking like an alternative here where he goes, you know, eight to 10 weeks of relatively l- normal, maybe even lower end testosterone dosage and then bumping it up and then bring it back down. I think, I think for side effects, that's probably better. You're yep. keep, keeping things under control a lot better. I think you're 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 putting less pressure on your cardiovascular system that way. As long, you know, I would I would actually, if I were him, I would actually space it out even more and do like ten to twelve weeks of t- 150 milligrams testosterone, and then and then ten to twelve weeks of uh, of his of his whatever you know cycle yeah, or whatever you whatever know? the bump whatever the bump is. Yeah, but but make but make that that lower dose testosterone transition a little bit longer rather than keeping it shorter. You know, I think yeah. I think that would yeah, just yeah, yeah. be. For health in general, I think that would be better. Um, I'm a fan of the of the Deca. You know, I think it's I think it's good. I think it's uh, good for for uh, for his joint health also, especially in his blast and and then recuperating thereafter. Uh, the only th- only issue I have is that you you <sighs> okay. So Deca has got a retarded half life. Okay, it's got like some 22 day half life. That's per injection. So when you when you think about a ten to twelve week cycle of Deca, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're off. You're off eight eight to ten weeks is not really an off eight to ten weeks. You are still lingering Deca throughout that. That and that's why I kind of want you to space out 
you know, your, your 150 milligram, uh, <coughs> testosterone dosage weeks to, to a little bit longer if you can. <clears throat> because if, if you're cycling with DECA every 10 to 12 weeks, you're essentially cycling with DECA all year long. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You know what's hilarious? Not funny, but did you see the Robbie Robinson uh, interview on R- on RX Muscle? No, YouTube? man. I, I've been meaning to. I've been meaning oh, to. Oh, it's great. And he kind of – He's a know, DECA – I know Robbie's a DECA fan. I know yeah, he is. And he kind of alluded sort of why he <laughs> – why you know he said he didn't know anything. He's like yeah. whatever. He didn't even know about anything. Like he yeah. was just a natural freak. Yep. And people don't believe him for as long as he could be. But then when he moved out to California, that's when he kind of learned about this stuff. But he said – all he ever did was a B12 injection with, I think, something else, like a, I don't know, B12 and calcium or something. I forget. He, he had this weird this, hmm. this a concoction he used and one shot a DECA for his whole, like, cycle. That's what he would do, and he would do that. You know, he won all – that's what he – that's all he ever knew. But he, And then he would stop everything. All year he was natural. Mm-hmm. But he said – and Dave was like, you, you, you that's unbelievable, whatever. But he said – but I did know that it stayed in my system so long that even though I wasn't on anything, the metabolites were still there. Maybe yeah, there you go. And and that's kind of what you just said. It's still hanging around. Kind yeah, of. yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that's what he did. He he only used he didn't use any testosterone. He didn't have on his contest prep. For Dave was just like, "Are you fucking kidding me? This doesn't, you're lying." He's like, you know, yeah. So anyway, that made yeah. me think of that. That's a good interview. That's yeah, I, I, I am. I, I definitely so check it out when you're doing cardio. Throw that on there. Oh, for sure, for sure. I saw it on there, man, and then I just forgot about it. And uh, yeah. that was a bad one to forget about because so, uh, so I want to talk about it. that on on the next Bodybuilding Nerds Radio because I fucking love Robbie Robinson, man. Yeah. So your crossover there was kind of it triggered my mind to think that <laughs> he that's what he was kind of, back then he was thinking that you already he knew, knew that, that back then. That's it's so good. long that he was like, well, I'm off. Yeah. I'm not on anything, but I maybe still am on something, yeah. you know, 20 weeks later or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was his way of thinking, he said. So, you know, I think for this guy, you know, if, if he just wanted to do like, say, 10 to 12 weeks of 150 milligrams testosterone and then 10 to 12 weeks of 400 milligrams testosterone plus throw in the DECA and then throw in the Anivar and then do that for 10 to 12 weeks and just stop there with the DECA altogether that year, you know what I mean? I think I think that'd be good. At least space it out a good six months or so before doing the DECA again. But then definitely keep up with the Anivar thrown into the high testosterone. You know, I, like I, if I were him, I would only do one cycle of DECA a year just to make sure that those metabolites keep plenty of time to at least lower to a certain level. That's Sounds my only thoughts. Good. <clears throat> yeah. Other than that, man, the doc already uh, told you what you need to do health wise, and uh, I agree. Next question here from the boards. Hey, docs. Quick question on leg training after minor knee surgery. I'm having a menis, menis, meniscectomy. I think he said that wrong. Meniscectomy. Yeah, a men, meniscectomy. Meniscectomy. Men, so he's having his meniscus worked on. Yeah, he's having it actually removed. Re- removed. Right. <laughs> uh, I know the recovery is not intensive, but I'm not wanting to push it back to injury in the gym. Uh, I plan on doing some DDP yoga. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> nice. I plan yeah. on doing some DDP yoga for a month or two after uh, after this surgery. Thanks, Vige. Gives me a little wink. He says, I assume the best way to get back in the gym is not jumping straight back into the heavy weights, etc. I just wanted your input on how you would go about getting back into leg slash back training after this. Mm. Well, this is going to be an, a doctor answer, like a real doctor answer. Mm-hmm. I, I probably, <clears throat> I probably would be super cautious, and I, I would, I would, I would maybe hope that his orthopedic or someone got him. I would probably put him in with a therapist for a while, for sure, for sure. Yep, and, and sure. make sure that everything was healed more than anything, because you want to start basically with range of motion exercises. You know, you you don't want to be going back in squatting, deadlifting. Can't, you, know, you can't. You know, you want to make sure the range of motion is appropriate. You want to make sure all the – even though it's laparoscopic, I, this is a they, – they, they do this right through a couple little holes in your knee. He'll mm-hmm. be he'll probably walk in the next day, you know, back to work or, you know, so, like that. But mm-hmm. um, I think – Yoga is great. That's going to help you with flexibility and stuff like that. But yep. you want to be monitored by a professional to make sure the knee is stable. You know, you're not, you know, creating any extra inflammation to prolong the healing. You want to make sure the range of motion is better. So I think the safest way to do it would hopefully someone got you in therapy. But other than that, I would say be smart. You know, you know, you know, you know, you just had a knee surgery. Don't go squatting 400 pounds. Fuck. Like, you know, I mean, yeah. I would avoid probably squatting altogether. I would probably stick to some girly exercises, range of motions type stuff, you know, um, 
just to get things firing again. Yeah. And make sure if you have any kind of pain, you feel pain, you listen to that pain because you're body's telling you something so aside from just you know being smart about it taking it easy i would i would hope that you're working with a therapist because if i was your doctor that's what i would do because i can't be there to monitor you every day to be like oh don't do that like i don't know what you're going to do when you go to the gym but you get the therapy three times a week they'll get that leg make sure everything's strong make sure everything's healed and boom you're just back to firing right off doing what you want yeah, you know, you can go to the gym and go full, full on. So um, that's what I, you know, that's what I was thinking when I when you said that. It's it's a tough one. So when you have a when you're removing the meniscus, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like removing the shock absorber in your in your lower body. So yeah. without the meniscus, you're technically bone on bone, unless they're putting something else in there. I don't know what they do with surgery these days. That they, they're very ingenious with how they with how they're able to do stuff with, with Yeah, and I'm not a surgeon either. Yeah, so. and I don't know anything about that. All I know is that with the meniscus removed, you are essentially bone on bone and you'll be bone on bone for the rest of your life. So n- now you need to think longevity here. You can't just be thinking about intense training uh, especially, especially for the lower lower body. It's going to be it will be problematic. Um, you know, it's not going to be the the end all of everything, but you know, you're going to have to be smart with your training. You're not going to be able to pound real, real heavy weights without, you know, possible arthritis later on in life, you know, and, and without that shock absorber in your knee, that possibility goes way up, way, right. way, way up. And, and it's not, it's, it, you know, it could be a matter of uh, just a couple of years before arthritis even form. So you need to be real smart and you need to attack your training in a different way. I just think that super heavy training with lower body or even with deadlifts or anything is just not in the cards anymore. Um, but there's ways around it, man. You can build intensity other ways. You know, yeah. Scott, Scott had his ACL re- like removed. He, he had like a major knee reconstruction on <laughs> with with his surgery, and that was you know he was pretty young when he had that done. But you would never know today that he had such an issue. You know, because the legs are great. He can squat. He's got. He can do everything in the gym. You know, yeah. so it's it's not a thing. So there's definitely a possibility. I mean, of course, that was AC, not meniscus. Meniscus kind of puts you in a different place altogether. Yeah. And and you're gonna have to like listen, like like the doc said, you're gonna have to listen to your body because there's gonna be uh, certain movements and motions that are not gonna feel good, and you're gonna have to train within those parameters. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Like. You know, you, you know, you can, you got to be careful of stability because, you know, one of the things that um, we look at when someone's having a meniscus problem or <clears throat> is like stability, like locking, popping, feeling mm-hmm. like giving out. Um, so you want to make sure everything's healed and stable. But I mean, I think eventually you'll be able to get back to doing what you, but I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in like whenever you have a surgery, you should be monitored by somebody like mm. a professional. Yeah. And, and the best way to do that till you're completely healthy is like, is like therapy. And, and I, I don't know if they put them in therapy or not, but that's what I would do. And I would say, Hey, have the therapist go in there, let them evaluate you. Them guys, believe it or not, a real physical therapist, a good physical therapist, they can pick up that they'll, they'll, they know when things are ready to go back to 100%. They, yeah. they, they can yeah. tell by your gait. They can tell by your strength. And they know that they know the time. Okay, this should be here, here, here. So um, other that, than yeah, that, that. That's their profession. That's what they're great at doing. Right, so. yeah, especially you get a good one. I mean, you can get some yeah. bad ones, but you get a good one. But mm. long story short is, like Veach said, just be smart with it, you know? Yeah. I mean, if something hurts, don't do that. Go on to the next exercise. Don't try to force throw it. Say, Ooh, this doesn't feel good, and go find something that feels good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pick your uh, exercises. I, and I think that goes for all in training in general. If I go yeah. to the gym and I start doing a uh, an exercise and I'm, I'm not getting a pump or it's something's feeling weird, like I feel a little pressure somewhere, I'm like on to the next one because yeah. something something's ba- something bad's about to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those are warning signs. You got to watch yeah, them. Yeah, you know. Yep. <laughs> uh, great, good question. Um, next question here from the boards. Hey guys, love your guys' shows. It's a toss up with this blood, sweat, and gear and BNR. Boom. Uh, I asked this all question. Worse than all them, so um, <laughs> yeah, thank right. you. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, uh, basically, this show and BNR is the same. So, uh, yeah, blood, exactly. sweat, and gear. It is right. Yep. Uh, I asked this question on BSG too, and I feel like this may be a silly question, or maybe the wrong one to ask it on. But I was recently listening to another podcast where a guy was drug tested and banned by the U.S. Anti Doping Agency for taking DHEA. 
Yeah. I am baffled at why it's banned by sports when it can be purchased at drugstores or Walmart. I was wondering if you knew what possible performance benefit or dangers would it have to make it banned. Thanks, guys. Would love to hear Dr. Ogden on BNR again. Oh, yeah. I'm a punk. Third wheel. What's going on, okay. man? Come I know. On. A, I know. I, every, you know what's funny is every Thursday I think about it, and then <laughs> something comes up and I'm busy. So I'm like, fuck, I got to, you know. Uh. Oh, God, well, I'm gonna well, get we, back. We don't mean soon. to put pressure on you. I just like to give you a hard time because you know. No, I, I want to come on. I love. I love. I haven't talked. To, well, no, I just did talk to Scott. So I think yeah. that. I think that did. Scott called. Satisfied me, so. you for a little while, anyways. Yeah, yeah. Like me and you, I we we texted except when I called you this summer and when I was at the campground because because yeah, yeah. you were fucking sick and you were. We couldn't record. Oh, you, that's right. You were called. Remember, you were. I remember that. Coughing for a. You had that cough for a while. Dude, I had that. I had that. I was like sick for like two and a half weeks. That was yeah, crazy. you were coughing up green shit. I remember we were talking. I was walking the dogs, and you were like, "Dude, I'm coughing up fucking green shit off." Still, I'm like, still, You're like, yeah. I thought you had pneumonia or something. I'm starting green to work. pieces of lung coming right up. <laughs> All right, but um, back to his question. I think, it, I mean, look. Does DHEA do much of anything for for most people as far as performance benefit? I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I think if a girl used it, this is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. If a girl used it for performance issue, uh, for a performance enhancing sort of thing, I think they may get more benefit out of it than than a guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think guys can supplement with it if they're on supplemental testosterone, but that's another debate. You know, do you need to do that? Do you need to not? But the the point of this is, it is a hormone that can potentially raise testosterone levels mm -hmm. and of course all other hormone levels mm -hmm. too. Yeah. And and when you're looking at it from the aspect that that the, you know WADA and the US anti-doping agencies are looking at it from anything that can raise testosterone or hormones is going to be banned. Yeah. Cuz they don't they don't see even though look we know DHEA isn't that strong. You I, I could go start it tomorrow and I guarantee I don't see anything. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't feel I'm not going to get stronger. I, I mean this is my opinion. I don't think so. Maybe my well-being would feel better if I had levels that were sort of fucked up or mm -hmm. low yeah. or high or estrogen was off. That's the key. That's Same, you know, yeah, so I, I mean, I think I might feel better, you know, well-being wise and it might balance things out a little bit. But for this specific question, because it can, you give that to a girl and even if it bumps her testosterone level up five, two, five points for a girl, that might make a difference because girls don't really have any. So, um, yeah. So so they see anything like I mean, and, and the fact that you can buy it at a grocery store doesn't really mean anything because you can buy primatine tabs behind the counter at mm -hmm. grocery stores. And we all know that that shit's banned, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's considered a performance enhancer. So you can't yeah. do a Fedra. Yeah. So that's what they're looking at, even though we look at it and we're like, that's so fucking silly. Like, come on. You really think that's going to make a guy run track faster or. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and the reason I brought up track is because this person's board name alludes to that so oh, wonder, right i see it <laughs> wonder if this person's a competitive track runner hmm. uh, or a track and field person so um yeah it's silly i know but that's that's what they're looking at they're looking at the potential of it increasing hormone levels which we know the increased testosterone level does give you benefits hmm. right i mean in, in most cases so i think that's the reason why it's silly but so here's the thing with DHEA. DHEA is uh, is kind of a master hormone. All right, it can be it can yep. be literally transformed through enzymatic separation into various different hormones in the body, not just estrogen or testosterone. It can be almost anything. There's a lot of pathways to turn it to anything almost. But um, so here's the here's the thing. So if you're a young male. Chances are your DHEA is just fine, you know. Right. <laughs> you know, if you're if you're between the ages of like 15, even for girls, if you're between the ages of 15 and 25, chances are your DHEA is just fine. DHEA is a hormone, master hormone that tend that tends to um, uh, dip off after after like basically you've reached like sexual your sexual pinnacle. You know what I mean? Your your mm -hmm. your top reproductive state, wherever that is, that might be in your mid twenties or late thirties or thirty, whatever, whatever it is, that is a hormone that peaks at that time. You know? Um so if you're a male at the age of twenty five and you take DHEA, chances are that hormone is just going to turn to estrogen. You get gyno, okay? Right. <laughs> probably mm -hmm. what's going to happen. Or it does nothing at all, you know, or, or it changes into like a prolactin or something. If you are low in DHEA, supplementing DHEA is going to help. But most of the time, that's for the older crowd, guys like me and Doc. 
<laughs> you know, yep. the guys guys that are are, are 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 you know past the age of thirty five. Technically, your DHEA's or, or or even females. You know, DHEA is a, is kind of a master master hormone for the adrenal complex too. Okay, so a lot of a lot of I think most of like it's a telling sign that adrenal insufficiency is uh, is is more likely the lower that your DHEA is. So so if you have any like uh, like uh, adrenal issues or anything, or you're supplementing with a lot of clenbuterol or a lot of ephedrine, and you're depleting those DHEA stores, supplementing the DHEA can help with that and restore that and and help your 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 adrenal functions uh, cor- correctly again. You know, and so that 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 that's a positive too, but it does so many different things. But in the end, it's it, it's a master hormone that can change your hormone levels altogether, and that's why it's, you know that's why it's a problem. Yeah, I mean, in and of itself, although it's low, it has a DHEA by itself. Even not talking conversions, it, it mm-hmm. does have some tiny bit uh, affinity for an androgen receptor. So yeah. w- when they look at that, anything that can stimulate those kind of pathways, they're they're th- they're this is this could give someone a benefit, and in the right setting, I mean. Like like Beach said, you know, an older guy who's trying to hang on for his career, I don't know, maybe it could give him a little bit of benefit. They don't want that, so uh, that's yeah. that's why it's banned. And yep, you can buy it at Walmart for like fucking dirt cheap too. Of course, who knows what they're really putting in it at Walmart. So Yeah, anyway, that's the problem. That's yeah, the, I mean, that's the main you gotta, problem. If you were going to use it, it's got to be something good, but yeah. like a good brand. But um, yeah, I think that's a good question though, and it's yeah. silly. And and you know what? That the the list of banned substances by the by the committees, the doping committees, is like a fucking. In, if you ever da- googled it and just try to, re- it's just like, it's like a encyclopedia of shit. No shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, tons. I mean, every, like and little stuff too. Like you know, even just little silly stuff and the DHEA, like that kind of stuff. You're like, it's so fucking lame, man. All that shit. Weird. You know what I mean? It's like so it doesn't. Weird. It does. It, it doesn't deter anybody from stopping to be, you know, the best that they can be. They're gonna well, fucking find a way. One they're way gonna find a way to do it. They're and always you, going to. You know. And you know what's funny is this is what cracks me up about performance enhancing. So and and like. <clears throat> I mean, athletes want to perform at their best, right? They want to be, of course, always. I mean, I'm talking about I'm talking about high level athletes. Yeah. I'm not talking about Steve Ogden. I'm <laughs> talking about fucking the guy who goes to the gym. I'm talking about motherfucking Olympic athletes. Yeah. I don't know why we wouldn't want them on whatever you know performance. For, fuck I mean, you, for real, man. Give them all the gear. <laughs> I want to see some crazy shit. Like that's I want to see some world records doing that's crazy why I was stuff. Always, I was always the guy when the baseball steroid thing was going on. I was like, "This is the best baseball we've ever seen." <laughs> I know, the right? Fire and Sammy Sosa were going back and forth, hitting bombs. Like, how exciting was that? I didn't even like Dude. baseball, and I watched that shit. And you were following it, right? Yeah. They're hitting sixty-three homers a year. They're fucking hitting five hundred foot dingers out. I'm not even a big <laughs> baseball fan. And you're like Dude, that was the be- I bet baseball made more money than that era than they ever have. For sure, because, for sure they did. Because people were watching who were just intrigued by the race. That you know, I remember there would be nights where they would flash on TV. McGuire hits a home run, and then on the East Coast, Sammy Sosa's up the bat. They would flash that back and forth. And, <laughs> I remember and, that man. That was exciting. You know, <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. And that's when Andrew Steen died and old McGuire Paul pulled that out of his locker. Yep. And then this is what I'm taking here. But um. I had yeah. the, I had the Flex magazine with Mark McGuire on the cover, and it was like yeah. a, he's talking about Andro and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. But you know, well, so yeah, it's a silly thing. I yeah, think it's a, it's a you know what thing. All, these athletes they they're, they're still they they get a, they're still doing what they need to do, and they're just hopefully some people are working with them who know how to monitor because they they're going to do so. You know, even t- if, even if you even if you leveled the playing field all together, the the guy who wins he would still fucking win. You know what I mean? Because it's it's, it's exactly. all natural ability, anyways. These things just amplify your natural ability. Yep, you're you're the best of the best is going to be the best of the best. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So and and that's what always my thing with baseball was was. And I'm not a big baseball fan, but with that whole thing, it was crazy. Was even if you gave someone all the, sh- the regular guy, let's say I gave you all the shit on that list, and, and I you know just dumped tons of stuff in you for months, and you trained hard, blah blah, you still would not be able to hit a 100-mile-an-hour fastball. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Because they don't make your eyes quicker. They don't make your hand-eye coordination quicker. Now, if you hit it, you might be stronger and hit it further. But 
That's what's so stupid. Ba- baseball, especially, that is one sport that you have to have. God, reflexes, reflexes aren't enhanced with that with things like that. Yeah, you know, you you, you stand up there and someone throws a hundred mile an hour baseball at you, and you're an average Joe, but you're on all kinds of. Sh- you ain't. You're still missing. You're just going to be a big, giant, strong misser. You're not hitting that baseball. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Oh, yeah, but, it's 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 insane, man. That's like you know, it's like I'm on I'm on I'm on human growth growth human growth hormone and testosterone. Like I should be able to hit 600, 600 you know fucking home runs and 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 you know do all kinds of crazy shit. I can't do any of that. None of that. Even less than the average person. You know what I mean? Even on to today, like with the foot with the NFL. My my birds are still hanging in there, though. By the way, I'll just yeah, throw I that saw out that. there. Still hanging barely, in there. barely. You back to what you just said. The other thing you couldn't do, something silly, is you you could take all the performance enhancing substances you want, and I bet you still couldn't throw a football seventy yards in the air. <laughs> right, I couldn't like, throw one like, seven like, yards like, in the air like Nick Foles. <laughs> no, no, spiral in someone's hands. No, you, you, that's just God given talent. You can't, you can't. Now you can enhance it, speed, strength. But you still couldn't – you couldn't give a normal guy that stuff. So that's why that's where I think it's silly because yeah. these guys are already fucking enhanced. They're born that way. Mm-hmm. You just give them a little bit more and it just makes them a little bit more better. So anyway. Yeah, yeah. Like anyway. I, I can throw a football seven yards but naturally, <laughs> right? And, and, and enhanced, I can throw it eight yards. Yeah. <laughs> Big fucking deal, right? <laughs> yeah. You know what? Speaking of throwing a football, man, I had this thing that happened the other day to me. Me and Stevie were having a catch. Oh, shit. And yeah, it was just one of those moments. And this is this is a little corny, maybe, but um, it was like a father son moment. Did you throw it as balls? No, no, no. <laughs> well, I've done that many times. No, but I had to, I was sitting there having a catch with him, and dude, he can fucking throw yeah. fucking football like better. He has a my son's got a cannon, dude. No and shit. I, I, oh. oh yeah, I don't know if you ever seen some of the um, flag football. T- the flag football. I've seen him throw dude, a ball like it's pretty. Like he throws dude, a nice ball. He's got a nice touch, and he just he just wrist action. But he can throw that thing far too, and and he throws like when you're having a catch with him, he's like it's like you can hear it whistle through the air. I don't know if you ever had a catch with someone like Fuck that. Yeah, that's I, scary I, I, actually. <laughs> I've, had, well, I've had a lot of catches in a lot of sports. I've played a lot of sports in my life, and you get these guys who have these quick action arms, and the ball's like sk- when yeah, it hits your you can hear it when you hear it coming. That's that's scary, man. Yeah, yeah. So I he, go, he, I'll, I'll go into like fetal position right away. Like wow, that's fast. He now he now doesn't. I'm, and this is funny because I was I told I, after I said this I was like that's crazy. I had the time, bro. Slow down. Don't <laughs> don't throw it so hard. He's like I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not trying, like, Dad. <laughs> I was like I was like flinching while I was catching my hands, you know, because I didn't want to hit me in the face. <laughs> and I just went back to I remember oh, having these catches in the front yard with him, and I would like th- like be three yards in front of him, and I would throw it to him. And he would miss it and smack him right in the face, and he'd pick it up and he couldn't throw it back to me. Like it would hit the ground. He would oh. try to throw it, and now, now his arm is like way better than mine ever was. That shit's crazy, isn't it? That's, That's luck. Crazy. You know what you got to do, man. You know what he needs to do. You need to get him doing power cleans and snatches, like these power building type movements, because yeah. it'll enhance his natural ability to throw that football. Like he's a big kid. If he yeah. if he uses his body weight to throw the football. Man, and if he's using the power that he builds from like doing cleans, cleans and uh, snatches and that sort of thing, man, he can throw a fucking monster yeah, ball. That, like, you does, know what I mean? Just natural good. ability, just like we were talking about: natural yeah. ability plus strength natural and ability. power. Right. We, we, I mean, I, he'll never be a quarterback because of his size, and he's not really mobile. But yeah, um, you but know, still. you know the thing about the, this is funny. You bring up about the lifting because we've been having having training, doing some lifting, but he. I, I, I got to get him over this. He has, you, you, he has the, you know, he had Osgood slaughters in his knees this past yes, year. Yes, that's and right. And he was having a lot of knee pain. Remember, I told you that. I remember that. Yeah. So now he's got like a mental block. He's oh. afraid. He's afraid to do legs. Okay. And I'm like, it's, I think you're fine. I Is think he still hurting fine. or no? Off and on, it still does, but that's because yeah. he's still growing. He's still growing. You know? No. Get, yeah. Get how how old is he? He's thirteen. Oh fuck! That'll be over in a, by by sixteen for sure. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. See, yeah, what I mean, he can just do body weight squats for now, you know, and yeah. just like bar snatches, bar lunges, that sort of bar cleans. Whenever and I stuff. try to get him to squat, he gets like panicky. And yeah, he, yeah, he, I he, understand. He, I understand. Yeah, but by but the time I, he's I sixteen, he should be good. I, I want to get some lower body stuff going. Anyway, yeah, that's my uh, that's our wad. That's our PED um, <laughs> in sports talk. 
Next question from the boards here from uh, our good friend UC Suma. He says, is there any difference between egg whites from whole eggs, where you manually remove the yolks, versus prepackaged cartons of liquid egg whites? He says, what about between liquid egg whites and the liquid egg substitutes, such as egg beaters, and et cetera? Is there any uh, difference? Um, I'll be honest. As far as I know, the only difference is the, the prepackaged ones are pasteurized. <clears throat> um I think they're just egg whites. I, I don't. I mean, that's what I always thought. I never really looked into it that the, deeply. There's, the, the, on, there's no difference. The, the, there's no uh, difference. The, yeah. The egg beater, the egg beater brands, and the egg beaters that that the liquid egg substitute stuff. That's all egg white with color. It's they, yeah. they just throw in a color, and there's some. Uh, I think there's some other like maybe beta carotene or something like that. Yeah. That the only thing I, the only thing I think on those that I notice, I think some egg beaters like the yellow ones yeah, yeah. that are egg whites. I think they maybe have like one carb. Yeah, as opposed yeah. to zero carbs from from the uh, it's the filler and added from the filler and the color, but it, they I think they do have one. If you look at the label, it's going to look the same, but I think it has one carb as opposed to the clear liquid mm-hmm. egg whites have mm-hmm. zero, which is really you know what the fuck? Who cares? If you yeah. want yellow, then eat yellow. But as far as whole eggs and cracking them yourself and pouring them out of a bottle, I think the only difference really is it's pasteurized. You could drink it. You you shouldn't drink. I'm sure people do, but you shouldn't drink cracked egg whites. You know, yeah. you could get salmonella. Hopefully you won't. But I think that's the only difference. I mean, I never, never hear to anything. I do know this, though. This is just my – I want to know – I wonder if anybody else notices this. Maybe it's just me. But I do notice that when – let's say I'm going to have six egg whites, right? Yeah. And I open the fridge and all I have is my regular eggs. So I crack those six egg whites as opposed to eating six egg whites, you know, the equivalent of six egg whites out of the liquid version, right? I feel like regular egg whites, cracked eggs – cook better they're fluffier yeah, they're not runny right yeah i do i i mean i don't know maybe i'm that, that's me it seems like no i agree went, man i think yeah, it's the same it's, way it seems like the pasteurized ones are a little bit waterier more watery yeah yeah runny. i think i think it has to do with like um uh, like they're the, blended or something yeah yeah it's it's almost because because when you crack an egg just a whole egg it's it's basically it's albumin it's egg albumin but it's it's uh it's not it's not been like um processed in any way so it's just like a gelatin lump yes right? yes yes yeah so that it's so and then and then when they when they pasteurize it they must they must do it with speed or something because that's what i was thinking yeah because it turns real thin like it turns from a from an actual like lump of gelatin like albumin gel and it, it turns into like an actual like a watery liquid and yeah, that's, that's and not so, your typical, you know, egg albumin is, is more gelatinous than that so it must have something to do with them speeding Speeding it up, like stirring it, and and like destroying like the the gelatin formation, just like yeah. a liquid, you know. But to, that's that's the only thing I noticed. But um, yeah, no, you could eat them all. Use them. Use any of them. They're all good. Yeah, yeah, they're all they're all good. I think and it's more. Want... It's probably more expensive. I think it is more expensive for like the buying those cartons of egg whites. You know. Yeah. I, I I've just done the math. Like per egg. <laughs> you mean like you mean per, like per think, like per like six grams of protein per like the carton versus buying whole eggs, you know, and separating. You yourself. think it's cheaper to you think it's cheaper to separate yourself? Still is, yeah, yeah. I think you're probably right because yeah. you can get eggs if you look around. You can get eggs pretty cheap, cheap in some places, and, and and um, but it's a pain in the ass though. It is a pain in the ass. It is, especially if you're eating like ten you're, of them. You're paying for you know you're paying for the convenience. That's for damn sure, you know. Yeah, no doubt. But as yeah. far as consistency goes, there's no difference. It's all the same egg whites, you know. Yeah. Uh, next question here from the boards, Doc. He says, uh, hey, guys, I'm a 41-year-old woman. Oh, lady listener, how about that? I'm a 41-year-old woman who used to run to lose weight. I recently started weightlifting. My body changed fast, and I have built a good amount of muscle and lost even more body fat in about four months. So, I'm not surprised. So, yeah, exactly. So I'm looking great now and just trying to get better. My problem is since starting the weight training, my body temperature has gone up a lot. I'm hot all the time. I don't see a problem so far. She says it's almost unbearable as this has just happened since starting – lifting weights she's 41 hmm uh, i thought i was hitting early menopause but have had all my hormones checked and everything is in range so it's not that good i don't know if uh, you have ever experienced this or heard of it happening any any help or advice you could give me much appreciated thank you love the show thank you for listening lady listener i'm surprised yeah that we have a lady listener or two or three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that, Beach? I had a couple thoughts. What do you? What's your? What's your? You 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 kind of said something. My first like, my first instinct was hormones, but then she said hormones are fine. So you know, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, it's not that. It's 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 core body temperature. Look, when you're running, 
always running to lose weight, you're essentially destroying your metabolism every time. <laughs> Unfortunately, unless your nutrition is 100% good in order to support an environment where you are running all the time to lose weight, then, uh, then that's fine. But most people do not understand how to correctly eat when they're running. They don't know. They don't get it. So right. chances are this lady was just burning – just burning fuel, you know, mm-hmm. and, and not replacing that fuel with, with good positive nitrogen retention, positive, you know, uh, healthy fats and that sort of thing, and even carbohydrate. So she was probably running her, her, her metabolism to the ground, you know. And, yeah. and as a result, what happens to your thyroid? Your thyroid output goes down. All these things happen, you know. So when you start training and lifting heavy weights and you put on muscle, not only are you building muscle, but you're building your metabolism and, and, and you're building your ability to work through food. So now yeah. that she's getting hot, most of the time she's getting hot after meals. I bet you anything. Uh, I, I mean that's what I was thinking. I yeah. was thinking it's just sort of like thermic effect of yes. building muscle and, and food. Yes. And, and the other thing I thought about, you mentioned it too. She mentioned all her hormones were fine mm. and in check. But one thing I'll say about – our hormone levels is they do flux, right? Yes. I mean, even even though people on TRT are kind of in the same range all the time, which our body normally isn't, you know. No, right. Um, but someone like this, you wake up in the morning, your your, your doctor orders. I'm sure this is what the, I mean. I don't know what they ordered, but I'm assuming the lady 41 comes in and she wants to know if she's premenopausal. Most average doctors are going to do, you know, sort of an estradiol, FSH, LH, maybe That's a, not and, good, and, yeah, and maybe progesterone. I doubt they check testosterone. Thyroid. I doubt they check. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the one I'm getting to. I don't know what they checked, but it thyroid would be a big one to check too. For sure. Because that can give you – and and in this case, hyperthyroid, which I, I don't know if that's – but anyway, that was my two thoughts. One, it's just because your metabolism is going up because mm-hmm. you're eating different f- fuel sources. Your body's building muscle and muscle's metabolic. Mm-hmm. Or two, your doctor didn't check everything they should. Yes, or, that's, that's the, definitely – I think that's definitely yeah. part of the case. Or three – they did check everything they should, but remember things flux and you could have got your blood drawn just at a good time and they yeah. still could be going up and down, up and down, up and down. That's mm-hmm. why people get hot flashes. Yes, that's true. That's true. Because it's not that they don't have any estrogen. It's that the one minute their estrogen may be good and then, and then the next minute yeah. it could be zero and it's fluxing around and then eventually it's just burning out. Mm-hmm. So there's still a couple hormone possibilities in my mind, uh, especially he – I always think whenever I hear of – Someone feeling hot or palpitations or thing. I always think thyroid first. Mm-hmm. So make sure that's all good and not just the TSH. Not just make- TSH. Yeah, get make sure T3, T4, and TSH are all tested. You want yeah. all three values. And then take a look back at your hormone panel and see what they ordered. If it's just like an estrogen, progesterone, T- um, L- blah, 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 excuse me, FSH and LH. You know, sort of. You, you might want to have your doctor delve into some other things. You know, testosterone level, DHEA, blah blah stuff like that. Um, other than that, if that's all normal, it's probably because you're putting on some muscle and you're that's eating. Exactly. More. I bet. Yeah. I bet you're eating more frequently. Mm-hmm. Your me- your meals. Hopefully, if you're lifting weights, you're eating frequent meals. You're eating more protein, more protein. Which, mm-hmm. which is thermic, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, that sounds like pretty normal to me. Um, I bet. I, I don't. I don't know what this lady looks like, but you know, in four months, and she thinks she's looking really good now. I bet that she's some some kind of like super responder to training, you know? Mm, yeah. And, and like she didn't even know that because all she ever did was run before, which was the opposite of what she should have been doing to begin with. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. So yep. so after many probably I don't know how many years of running and burning her metabolism down 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 down, now that her muscles are responding accordingly and building up her metabolism, it's like it's built it's like it's on fire from where it was like it was at like a ground zero and now it's like raging. And it's yeah. it's not always going to be raging. So I think I think what's happening with her, it's like it's it's reaching a crescendo to where it's going to remain kind of elevated at a certain level. You know what yeah. I mean? And the more yeah. muscle you put on, the, the the higher that rate is going to be. And the more you train, obviously too. But of course, nutrition is always very important there too. But I mean, you know, I think that this is as a, a kind of a positive sign. I would not I wouldn't call that a problem at all. I think mm. if your core temperature goes up and all things considered are healthy, that's a Beautiful, beautiful sign. Yeah. The only other thing that I would add to to respond to her is yeah. that we don't have any information on is are you taking anything? And I'm not talking about, you know, I'm talking about do you take any uh, – fat burners are you taking a pre-workout um supplements yeah right yeah because this them things could you know if you're taking something has a ton of caffeine and then you know pre-workout or or you're taking um 
I don't know, some kind of energy pills throughout the yeah, day. Yeah. They, they could make you feel flushed and hot too if they got a lot of niacin in That's them. That's true. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, we don't know what she's taking. I mean, and most people who get into training, you know, she's probably taking a protein shake. We know that. Hopefully. I mean, right? Hopefully. Uh, hopefully. Yeah. From, from true nutrition, no doubt. Use it. True nutrition. From, from true nutrition, <laughs> of course. Um, but anyway, that was just something. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, it, let it'll us, be, uh, you know what, uh, lady listener, why don't you hit us up and, and let us know what your, you know, what supplements you're using, what your diet looks like and stuff, and then uh, we can kind of go from there, you know? Yeah, yeah. Just kind of keep us posted. Um, oh, we've got our good buddy Paul Erlinson's back here, and this one's kind of long here, so just bear with me, all right? I don't know if this is an update, Doc, or if this is just more stuff that he's talking about. Yeah, it's an update, which is interesting. You know, it's interesting. Oh, good. You okay. Know, remember, remember his doctor put him on this. All kinds of shit, right? He's having those lower, um, we call it lower urinary tracts, and like he's having like pelvic pain over. It's been going on for him for a long time. He's had tons of things done, and they really haven't got to an etiology, which kind of sucks. sucks. But the last time he 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 was telling us about his experience, um, which is kind of cool, documenting that for everybody. And uh, his doctor put him on a three part regimen. You know, if a doesn't work then try b yeah if B doesn't work then try c and i said i don't really like that kind of medicine but at least he has a plan because mm-hmm. some doctors at this point might say hey look you got to live with that i can't find anything wrong with you yeah, and that's not good so i think he's just giving us an update you can read that and then i think what time is it yeah we could do that i have if you want to read his thing and i think i'm going to ha- i'm going to pick your brain on this this instagram okay cool it's kind of a it's a, it's a bodybuilding one. I think it might it might be something um, everybody might want, might want to hear. Right on, right on. Okay, let me read this update here from Paul. He says so. The results of the three medication shotgun approach. You know, he says uh, so. Part one. This is a the doxycycline. The antibiotic said did nothing, and then he went on the step two, which is the bentil. He says uh, it did help the bladder qu- the bladder pain quite a bit. He said he probably reduced it by seventy five percent. He said it also cleared up some chronic diarrhea he was having. So, okay, because that's cool. what we usually use it for. <laughs> no shit. There you go. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a, 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 an, an antispasmodic. Yeah, so that's what no I use it for. No shit. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Since, he says, since the Bentil didn't work 100%, I still tried the third med, the, uh, the Baclofen. He says, and that didn't help at all. That's a muscle relaxer too. So we went back to the bent hill for the time being, it's, and it's really pretty good at managing the pain. He said, then today I saw my urologist again, unlike last visit in October when she seemed to be out of ideas. She was full of energy and all kinds of ideas today. Basically, she has suggested suggestions for me on three major fronts. One, kidney stone formation. Two, the bladder pain. And three, prostate health. Uh, number one. Kidney stone formation, we went over my results from the last 24-hour urine capture, which are still quite bad. Uh, Sodium, urea, nitrogen, creatinine, uric acid, and oxalate are all high, out of normal range. She gave me some uh, revised dietary guidelines to help remedy the situation, and I will refer me to an endocrinologist. Yikes. Okay. And so for the bladder pain, uh, she is fine with the Bentil that my PCP prescribed for me. But she said at some point I may want to experiment with some bladder-specific relaxers. And then part three, the prostate health. She did a blood draw for yet another PSA test, and she did her digital rectal exam uh, to check pelvic floor tightness and prostate. And, Pel- and that's what I was saying, one of the things we need, he needed to get done, you know, but I think he – A digital yeah, check. Yeah. yeah, yep. She says pelvic, fo- pelvic floor seemed fine. If not, she would give. Uh, she would have recommended physical therapy for that. A prostate, however, may not, maybe not so good. She found a pea-sized nodule, which is worrisome. So I'll need to get a biopsy for that and see if maybe I have prostate cancer. Depending on what the biopsy show, we'll go from there. May have to go off HRT, she said. Side note on the prostate biopsy, she said, don't worry, the incidence of sepsis is only about 1% or 2%. Um, he says that call me right down. I, you know, at, <laughs> yeah. at his age, I, you know, I don't, I don't know that the, you know, I think a pea sized nodule is pretty common. You know, uh, I was think, I was thinking that too, especially yeah. in the in the um, 
in 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 light of uh, his PSAs were always normal. But mm-hmm. you know what? She's a urologist, and I guess they have to take care of well, that. Well, yeah. no, I mean any 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 nodule is worth investigating. I'm just right. I'm oh, just you know right. I'm you not worried right, about though, it. It might be normal though, right? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but definitely have to check it out. So, yeah. man, that's a tough spot. But at least it sounds like he's he's. His, his, um, he's getting progress. There's some yeah. progress. There's forward and, forward action. You know? And at least he found a medication that's like helping him not with the discomfort. Sort of the bental seems like it's at least masking whatever pain he's having until they figure this out. So yeah, yeah. That's, a, um, that's a good update. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Hey, um, let me let me pull up this 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 Instagram post. All right. Cool. Uh, question. A question from the gram. Let's do it. And I, and, I, and I think some people might want to hear this, and I want to see what you have to say. I had my thoughts. I, I haven't answered this yet, so hmm. let me just um, – So he said – you know, everything we do is for informational educational purposes only, right? So I, <laughs> I – you know, when people send me questions, I'm always like, well, I can give you my opinion, but, you know, you've got to see your doctor. So I'm, I mean – so this guy, basically to make a long story short – He's been using some clenbuterol in a liquid for sh- fashion, mm-hmm. um, and I mean, I don't think I need to go into doses. I don't think that matters. Long story short is he's been getting a weird sensation, almost like a heartburn feeling in his throat, mm-hmm. and he was thinking it might be heartburn, um, but believing it might be caused by the clen. And any reason or knowledge on the subject? In other words, do you think clenbuterol can cause heartburn? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, is it actual? He says it's actual. He didn't say it was actual heartburn. He said it feels no, he said like it's like it a be. weird heartburn. I'll give you my response that yeah. I haven't responded to him. Two things. I think um, it's probably not, you know, not happen to everybody. But I, obviously, I don't have a paper in front of me to report this because I'm not a statistics guy. But I use a lot of my medical stuff. I use common sense. Mm-hmm. Clenbuterol is a beta two agonist. It relaxes smooth muscle. It could potentially relax your, relax your lower esophageal sphincter, mm-hmm. giving giving you some acid reflux that mm-hmm. that would be my first thing second thing is and probably more likely when do most people take their clen usually first thing in the morning on an empty stomach on an empty stomach clen. yeah okay liquid clen what do these companies use a lot to mm, a lot of alcohol to, and a lot of filler in there yeah if it's alcohol based and he's taking a you know a, a, a cc or half whatever whatever the dose is 40 micrograms and that's the whole cc and it's just all it's just alcohol based solvent mm-hmm. that right there would give can give some people heartburn it would be like taking a shot in the morning for some people so i think he might actually be having heartburn and it could be from liquid more likely from the alcohol base mm-hmm. if there's one there the other possibility is yeah it could do it so i haven't answered him yet i thought that would be something for maybe i want to hear your thoughts about mm-hmm. it too it could be um, the alcohol it could be the different carriers They're, they use a lot of different carriers out there and i don't know what what he's using but right. so, sometimes man that can that can burn on the way down you yep. know what I mean? And if you're and if you're chronically burning on the way down day after day after day, you're going to get what feels like um, a heartburn because it just kind of sits there at the base of your throat. Right. Yeah. Um, that that's just one thought. The other thought was, you know, obviously actual heartburn, like the doc explained, taking stuff on an empty belly. Um, so yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, I just it's definitely carrier involved. I doubt it has to do with the actual clen itself. I've not, you know, I've been, Me I've been, I've been I using actually... beta two agonists forever. You know, I mean, um, and uh, I've never had bad heartburn, not once. You I, know, I um I was just hypothesizing how I I was trying to rationalize how it could possibly do it, and that's how that was my that was my path. That was sort of my bio. Oh. Bio- it biology thinking it was a good no that's a good it's a good conclusion a good hypothesis i will say but my big thing my big thing was the carrier whatever his brand or product because he did say he used it before and didn't have a problem yeah and and you never know man these guys that do the liquid stuff they just get whatever they get their fucking hands on. You know what I mean? They they yeah. don't they don't list the ingredients there for the carriers. <laughs> and the I and I I you know I've I've heard of some of these sort of um, gray area places like the peptide kind yeah. of companies. Yeah. Uh, Mark, what's it? Research the research liquid research stuff. Places, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've heard of some being suspended in grain alcohol. Mm-hmm. You know, and that could burn going down and give you some heartburn if you're sensitive to something like that so my first thought was does it smell like alcohol because if it does switch products because it's probably the alcohol Mm -hmm. and you're getting heartburn Mm -hmm. um i didn't get a chance to go back and forth with him but about about whether he's having any other symptoms yet because i i got this yesterday i've been so busy i didn't answer him back but i'm obviously going to but um you know 
you got to make sure it's not palpitations. Are you feeling, you know, check your pulse. Why the, um, this is what I'm going to tell him, you know, check your pulse. Why this is going on because you want to make sure that weird feeling heartburn, you feeling maybe, maybe you're having palpitations, mm. you know, mm. you don't want that to happen, you know, cause some people will get like a, when they get like a palpitation of like a run of a certain rhythm, they might feel like a lump in their throat kind of feeling mm. stuff like that. You know what I mean? And Let's what do we see. know about Right. Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff I was thinking. But my big one was it is probably heartburn and might be coming from the liquid. Yeah. 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 It's, the, I, it's not the actual clen itself. It's definitely yeah. the liquid. It's, you know, so. Um, so switch it or take some Zantac with it probably. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good plan. Or, or yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> if you can get tablets, you know, that's probably the best way. But that, that is hard to do, you know. This is uh, that's why yeah, 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 that's yeah. why that's why people go the liquid I route, thought, you know. I thought that was an interesting one that I haven't had someone ask me before. How I about like, hmm. how, how about you know get off the clen and go go get some primatine at the, at the fucking Walgreens <laughs> yeah. and some caffeine? Well, yeah, you know? just get off it. Yeah, don't. That's bad for you anyway. Yeah, but, you, if you, you I'm just going to answer the ephedrine and caffeine goes a long way, man. You know, if this stuff is giving you chronic esophageal inflammation, then uh, it's not good. You know. Yeah, no doubt. I'm always going to answer someone's question the best I can. You know yeah. what I mean? Even though I may not agree with what they're doing, you know, um, that's, yeah. what, that's why I do the show, you know, because no, you're no. not going to get a straight answer. He goes into his doctor's office and they're like, he's like, <laughs> he takes the bottle with him. He's going to get punched in the face. <laughs> hey, I'm taking this stuff and it's giving me heartburn. What's that fuck? What the hell? You know? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. they don't oh, get it. Boy. They don't get it. We, we know, we know our people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. That, that's we, why we that's relate. Why I do the show. That's why I still do the show every three weeks. Yeah. Yeah, every three weeks. <laughs> we are monthly at least. <laughs> I know I know. I want to do it in my heart, but I've just been so damn busy. I, I, I honestly – you know what I've been doing? Because here's the thing I've been doing for the last few weeks is <clears throat> on my days off, me and Chrissy literally been working from day to night sort of moving. Yeah, you know? yeah. I mean, you have to we're, actually. We're so. Going to the gym, then then we're coming small, home. We're packing the truck here and there. Yeah, yeah. Pack it. So like Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday of this week, I was off. All both all three days, we were taking stuff over to the house. Table here, table there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as much stuff as we can fit in F one fifty. You know. Yeah, um, that's, that's a lot though, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's all. Oh, the I'm F-150. so glad I have a truck though. I know. For this, I fucking this love my F one fifty, man. Me too. For this reason, right here. I will always have a truck. Yeah, it's because they come in fucking handy. When so you need handy, them. so handy when you don't. You know, it, it, well, I mean, and you also have three big dogs. There's no other vehicle where you can fit three big dogs comfortably. No, that well, you know this because you got the same truck. When you put yep. that back seat up, you got when you put that back seat up. That whole area is fucking big. The dogs lay in there perfect. It's huge, man. It's huge back there when you put that seat yeah. up. It's like uh, it's like a like a like a powder room in a house or something. Like a little, yeah. it's like a mini a little mini hotel room for them. <laughs> no, it's awesome. It's perfect. It's great. And then and in the back, you know, you can fill it up with all kinds of junk. Do you have a cover on yours or no? You you have a no. Nope, I purposely didn't want one because of that reason because I bought it. I got my trucks. The reason why I bought my trucks is when we bought the beach place and we got the scooters. Mm-hmm. Oh. So like, so I could transport the scooters. So gotcha. I, a, co- a cover would just get in my way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, I have, a, I have got a tunnel, so it's like I can roll it up, and then you know, it's like a leather. Uh, yeah. See, I never thought about that. You could do the, you could do the roll up. Oh, they're, dude, they're so worth it. They're so worth. It. I think they're like, like three hundred dollars, like installed, you know, at the place. So it's like, and and then they roll up. They're really good quality. And the, they're like, not, you know, I forgot yeah. about the roll-up guy. Yeah. Now, does it have bars that you have to take off or anything? No, you don't got to take anything off now. Not anymore. Okay. I think the old way, that was like okay, the old, yeah. old design. That, now everything all- just rolls right up. No no worries. And it's all like that industrial Velcro, you know? So it's like, okay. Yeah, I've driven through some bad storms, and that Velcro holds like no, like it's like Not going to come peeling off the side. No, no, it's like straight Gorilla Glue, yeah. Oh, Gorilla Glue! Oh my yeah. God, that shit is strong. You ever you that's that that's, yeah. you know that's a real product. Gorilla I know, glue, right? I know. Yeah, it's, and, is, and it's a wonderful that, weed strain. Oh boy, mm-hmm. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, for sure. yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's good. It, it is what they say it is. How about that? <laughs> you wait, you one hit, and you wake up the next day. Yeah, you're, yeah. You're Gorilla Glue to the couch. Yeah, exactly. You're like so heavy. <laughs> Why is everything so heavy? <laughs> you have just enough energy to lift the chip to your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, what do you got going on today? You got some uh, some football to watch today or no? Well, yeah. So I'm going to get off here and hopefully Chrissy's up right now and we're going to go hit some back, I think. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to come back and we're going to just do what we've been doing. Just pack small, up some more yep, shit. Yep, yep, take take it. it over um, like we did yesterday. I That's took over yesterday. 
Yeah, I took over my whole deck. My deck is empty now. My two deck patio furniture. I had a, we had like a couch out there and we had chairs out there with mm-hmm. table, couple of tables. That's all gone. Um, so the deck's empty. I think the next thing we got is these two curio cabinets that I'm going to take over, but it's still snowing. So I don't know if that's a good idea. We'll probably just take some boxes and shit. So um, are, are you, are, so does the new house, is that going to have a pool or no? No. What the, you mean the new, new the, the real new, new house? The, the new build. Yeah, yeah, no, but the, um, here's the thing. We, we, um, you know, we kind of, we, we didn't want, we don't, we didn't want to pull. You're anymore. over it. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. We're over it, but really it's because with the beach, you know, being down the beach in the summer, this whole summer, we were down there for like six weeks straight in June to July. Like we barely ever came home. Yeah. We put so many, we spent so much money on chemicals because every time we'd come back, it would be green again because mm. nobody's using it. Right. And then it would run out of chlorine and then the water gets fucked up Ugh. and you've got to start all it's over. A fucking pain in the ass, you know, man. You're str- calling, it stresses me out. Just listen to it. So I'm, like, no, I'm calling no neighbors. Way. You know, I'm calling friends that, from work and they're like, yo, why don't you and your family go over and swim in my pool to keep it, you know, to yeah. keep it used. People were coming over swimming in it for me. So <laughs> so when we started looking, that was one thing we were like, we're not even going to use it. But here's the thing, which is really good though. We chose the neighborhood we chose to build in because they actually have a really big community uh, pool with a rec center and a oh, gym. Oh, there you go. There you go. You got all and, that shit. Uh, That's great. Yeah. It's got a real a beautiful pool. And um, How's the gym? A, How's the gym there? Is it just like I don't a, know. I'm sure it's a hotel. I'm sure it's cardio and like, TV. But is, I haven't like seen a, it. Yeah. There's like a pre-core. Ellip- think, elliptical and a yeah. treadmill. Yeah, I'm sure it's a hotel, a t- hotel type, if anything. But you could go do cardio, you know. Perfect. And then um, it's and we the lot we bought is a corner lot, which is, you know, a one minute walk to the clubhouse where the pool is and everything. We're, we're right there. We got a good spot. So we and it's part of our maintenance sort of um, organization. You know, your fees or whatever. You know, oh, the, right. Your, your homeowners association goes. To the homeowners office. association. Yeah. Your, your your fees. You know, you pay like I don't think we pay like eight hundred a quarter or yeah. I don't know whatever. I'm yeah. fucking what it is, but it's something like that. And that's part of your pool membership, and you can bring friends and guests, and um, you can rent out the clubhouse. They have like an area where if you wanted to have a party, oh, wow. birthday party, they have like a you know, like a room where you could yeah, rent out yeah. for parties. That's neat. Real nice. Yeah. That's cool. So that's why we got that neighborhood. Cause the kids still like the pool here and there when they're home. Mm-hmm. But this was a good sort of alternative. Like, look, it's not in your backyard. Mom and I don't have to keep it up no more, but you guys can take all your friends up there and go swim whenever you want. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So. Out of your hair. That's, that's, that's the way to be. Yeah. Like well, that. yeah, they just can't roll blunts and stuff. And get <laughs> up. Oh yes, they can. They just can't get caught. <laughs> 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 kidding, right. kidding, kidding. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. That's Other what I'm gonna do right now. Actually, I gotta go. And then and roll some I gotta have all that done by 4:40 p.m. Because I'm gonna watch my Philadelphia Eagles shock the world again. <laughs> Wait, I, I'm so lost, man. Who, who are they playing? They're playing the New Orleans Saints at home. Yeesh. And the Saints kicked our ass this year, forty-eight to seven. The, the Saints kicked everybody's ass this year, forty-eight well, to seven. Well, the thing <laughs> today, the Giant gets slayed. Yeah, okay, he gets slayed. I Nick, will watch and I will Nick, send you text Nick messages. Foles, Nick Foles is magic. He's he's, he's Nick <laughs> Nicky Six. He's bringing us to the promised right. lands again. All right, that fucking Drew Brees, man. Does he ever get old? No, he's fucking good. He's you know so what? good still, he's, and he's like he's, so he's like good. he's like seventy. You know, you, you he's know, been playing for twenty five years. Yeah, do you remember? I don't know if you do or not, but you know when he when it, when the, when the Chargers drafted Philip Rivers and Drew Brees left, it's because he fucking had a major shoulder injury. That they didn't think he was ever gonna. He no, might not man. ever play again I after that shoulder that. injury. Wow. He's come back and he's better than ever. And just you know, he's not aging. The dude's fucking. He's a freak. Them guys are freaks, man. He's like look at, look at, he's like the football version of Nolan Ryan. Remember Nolan? Yeah. Nolan Ryan was like the the greatest pitcher ever, and he was like pitching into his seventies or some shit. Tom Tom Brady is the same way, dude. Tom Brady's forty one. That's I'm unbelievable. Sure. Yeah, still, still, I, I couldn't even. Them dudes, they're that's there you go. We're back to natural back ability, to, right? There you go. Yeah, they're different. That's, they're, even that's them guys. The, are, that's that's the elite. That's the cream of the crop. That's what they. Can I don't do. think ATA is going to affect Drew Brees. In the <laughs> I don't think it's going to make him throw better. Yeah, yeah. Although he'd probably test positive and get in trouble for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So anyway, that should be a tough game. I just hope it's a good game, not a blowout again. Good we'll deal. See. Good deal. I've got to do. Uh, I actually have to go to the gym today and do some uh, some lower body stuff. 
a lower body workout, you know? Oh, you know what? I, I saw your video, uh, your sh- excerpt clip from your <laughs> butt stuff day. <laughs> the butt stuff day. That was and fun. you know what? I'm thinking we need more of that. More butt think- stuff? Yeah. No. That was a little – no. Yeah, well, yeah, more butt stuff, but I'm thinking we need more videos of you and Scott training. That was pretty – I liked it. You you had the lumberjack look going. Yeah, that's that's, that's just my look. That's just what I look like. <laughs> you look good in a flannel. Oh, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. I have many flannel. <laughs> Someone – I think it was the Nags didn't know it was you. I'm like, I knew it was him, but they thought it was some other brown guy like a – yeah. Some brown guy, some brown guy robbing the house with his hat and his uh. But no, I liked the video was sh- kind of short, and I was kind of like, yeah, yeah. It had to be, it had to be condensed to, to a watch, minute, you know. I, want, I would like to watch. I wanted to watch it on do cardio and watch watch the nerds train a little bit. It yeah, been fun. yeah, you would watch like a like a full like five minute video. It's a very that's a long time. That's a lot of nerds, you know. No, I'd watch. I'd watch it. It would be fun. <laughs> oh, I think we'll stick with our one minute uh, Instagram. Posts, you know. <laughs> Scott's camera was good though. The video was clear as shit. Was yeah, he, he, he doesn't get. What's he got a GoPro or something? No, he just uses his phone. Yeah, <laughs> oh, he just shit, uses his phone the whole time. Yeah, good. yeah. Oh, I, like he, that. See, this, that that that's a lot of his world is just like a lot of the social media, and it has to be. You know, that's just work. That's his world. That's you know the people he deals with and stuff. You know, and, and to a lot of the degree, same same with me. You know, but I'm not like a phone guy. I don't even bring my phone into the gym. You know. And so, so, do, so it's different really when I get it. there and, and Scott's got, got the camera going right away. I'm just like, oh, boy, I'm already like uncomfortable. Fucking photo shoot. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, like, I don't know how to act. How do I act? I'm already uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, we'll uh, I'll talk to you in a month. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk to you in about three and a half weeks. <laughs> no, no. We'll, we're going to do this <laughs> sooner. Next time you talk to me. No, nah, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna try to do it next Sunday again. We'll try to do it next Sunday again. Yeah, what the if hell? If we get the questions, yeah. unless life gets in our way, but um, we always plan for like Sundays if it's if if we can, right? Sundays so. Sundays are the best day yeah. for us to do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Especially this time of year, I don't got nothing going on. You know, football except for moving. football, but that's not till the afternoon. And moving, moving all your stuff. You know. Yeah, that's winding down a little bit, and I got a mover coming because the. Uh, I do have concrete, movers still pool. because I have this dining room set that I'm sitting at right now, and there's no way I can do it. But at this table, I asked Christine, "What the fuck did we buy this thing from? <laughs> it must weigh ten thousand pounds." It's like, I hate that one. shit. You know what you do with that, man? That's you, Craigslist. Craigslist. It gets someone to it, fucking buy it and take it away from you. I well, see, she. This is the one we we've sold. Our, our house is pretty much empty as far as couches and stuff because we've sold most of the everything, like furniture, good. cables, everything. But this is a piece that's ve- it's still very nice and it'll look good in our new house. Oh. So she wanted to keep, she wanted to actually keep this mm. piece, and and the hutch that's with it is seven feet tall and it must be five thousand pounds. Oh, I mean, Jesus. there's no way I can move this myself. So I still got to pay a mover to do this. Yeah. Oh man, that's uh, that's a nightmare. Fuck that. Yeah, yeah. I definitely pay someone to move that. Yeah. No, I wouldn't even because I'd be afraid I'd break in and fucking yeah. something anyway. Yeah. All right, Doc. And we need to like, you, sit until we at least move. You get to uh, doing all your crazy business, and then I've got to get to training. And on that note, man, the doctors are out. See you guys. At Vices Radio Network.